Everybody get signed in. Okay, I show it is 8.32, so we are going to go ahead and get started. I appreciate everybody coming today. Good morning. You guys ready? All right. Well, let's kick this off. We got a lot to cover today. I am impressed that we have this many people here. Um, as I've joked before, we never have this many people at the budget meetings or any of the uh, more mundane things that we get to do. But uh, glad to see everybody. Everybody is here. Um, we're going to start. Uh, obviously, call the meeting to order at 8:32. You can just take okay. these great notes. Yep. And uh, certification form. Certification form. Yes, we can verify that. We also have uh, notes from our last meeting in February, which were distributed and uh, approved by the groups. So I'd like to go ahead and get a motion to approve those minutes. So, we'll second. Okay. All right. Come on. You might point out one minute to go to the Yeah, just I'll yeah. just so everybody knows, uh, certifying a quorum. Uh, Rick Hughes had to drive back to Denver. Uh, he just had a grandbaby. Uh, he didn't know he was having a grandbaby when he got here two days ago, and he turned around and went back to Denver because he found out he was having a grandbaby. So um, uh, Rick is on. Uh, he may have to jump on and off, and if he does. Uh, we have um, a proxy with Eric for him if he needs to, but uh, he is on the phone now. So, so we're good to go. All right. All right. Um, well, it's been a whirlwind uh, for the last uh, four months. Uh, I don't know um, if everyone's aware. We've uh, we, we, we've uh, had a, a lot of excitement here uh, over the last couple of months, and um, uh, I want to especially point out uh, a lot of the efforts that have come from the staff, uh, from you guys, the owners, uh, from the board, and especially from Julie Houston. Uh, for those of you who may or may not be aware, uh, we acquired uh, Unit 110 uh, yesterday. Um, so it is now, uh, Taco now owns Unit 110. Um, I won't get into a lot of detail on it, but I do want to recognize Julie Houston for doing a hell of a job. Um, I'm not going to get into a lot of questions on that right now. Certainly, we can address it if uh, if questions do come up. Uh, I want to keep the kind of the meeting moving, uh, but um, uh, we'll address. Uh, you know, that does become property of Taco now, which means obviously we have a an additional common element. Um, we'll discuss a little bit about, you know, what we may do with that um, uh, later on. But, you know, for now, that's uh, just a quick update to let you know what's going on. And I do want to thank everyone for putting, being patient with us. I know there's a lot, been a lot of people wondering what, what's been going on, and we've had a lot of disturbances as a result of that. And I can assure you the board has not ignored any of the various um, emails and uh, outreaches that we've gotten. We've been doing our best to try to deal with the issue, and now it's dealt with. So. Um, anybody want to add anything before we move on to financial reports? Board? I would just add that there was a lot of assistance from st uh, local and county uh, law enforcement and mental health people Oh, as yeah. Well. I so, know the name of about four <laughs> deputies that I never knew before uh, a couple of months ago. So, so. That's two years in a row we've gotten to know all the local officials. <laughs> <laughs> Last year because of the fire. And, right. And this year because of the fire. Storm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah Pete. Uh, I would like for you to officially acknowledge Julie and the jobs. Oh, I thought you I just did. did. I just oh, did that. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can uh, just just to uh, just expand upon that uh, just a little bit. Um, Julie probably has 160 hours into dealing with uh, into helping us deal with, uh, with with the issues we've been working on with with, one, with 110. For those of you that um, didn't read the minutes, we uh, in executive session last time um, addressed the need to possibly buy that unit if 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 the opportunity presented itself, and Julie. Uh, probably presented the offer a uh, half a dozen times, um, and uh, out of nowhere on Monday, uh, the tides turned and uh, the offer was accepted. And um, the uh, the owner landed in Vermont approximately two hours ago. 
So we think, we hope. We, we hope. <laughs> she got on or the plane in Denver. Where she's the only door. thing we, we know. know. <laughs> she could be in TSA custody. She had, she had, she had, two, did she have two connections coming. Yeah, she yeah. had a four-hour layover in Denver. Oh, that's two, pleasant. Two, two, two hours and forty-five minutes layover in Newark. She was supposed to land in at 9.30, so she got, I don't know if she got there or not, but I know she got on. After the descent into Denver, she might have not wanted to get on another airplane. Yeah, she's yeah. hitchhiking. Yeah. All right, let's move on to financial reports. Uh, before we do financial reports, uh, oh, you to I'd, like to introduce, okay. I'd like to introduce our new insurance agent, Hello. Uh, Jennifer Wade with American Family. Jennifer. Hi everybody. Hi. Uh, as as some of you might know, we there was a transition in, at the office that Jennifer is now uh, in uh, has in charge of uh, is the lead agent on, and uh, I, I don't know if those are the right terms, but there you go. Uh, Chris McClure was our agent up until January, and uh, Chris moved on to uh, more independent uh, brokerage of insurance. He he. Thought it was time for a career change, and uh, our policies were banked with another agent in town, American Family agent in town for a while, and he did a good job, uh, Dale Wilbanks, and he did a good job of taking care of, care of us on a couple of things that came up uh, while that was going on, and then uh, American Family has hired Jennifer to uh, to uh, take over that that uh, that that office, and now she's with us and. Do you have a few things to say? And Just, uh, you know, excited to be here. Um, you know, I've actually been with American Family for 14 years this October, so I'm new to you, but definitely not new to American Family, not new to the industry. I uh, actually started as an agent out in a small town outside of uh, Vegas, Nevada. Uh, did that for eight years and was a sales manager the last five um, with American Family out in Utah. And this opportunity came up, and I decided <coughs> that I liked being an agent more than I liked being uh, on the corporate side. So... Back to being an independent business owner, excited to take care of you guys. Uh, you'll see me at uh, events out in the community and excited to be part of Durango. So, thank you. And Jennifer, American Family and Jennifer, of course, takes care of our our, poli our, our property and liability policies uh, that y'all pay for with your HOA fees. However, she also can handle your individual condo owner's policies. She handles Gary, she handles mine, and probably some others in the room. Uh, so, and, and one thing we would, would like to point out, because we've had a, a recent incident uh, where, a, where an owner who had a problem did not have insurance, her own, and that is a problem. Uh, but our CCNRs require you are compelled to have a condo owner's policy. If you don't have one, you're in violation of the, of the, uh, of the uh, condominium declarations. Uh, also want to point out, because it's important, that one of the things that your policy should also should have and should cover is what's called loss assessment. It's where if and they all, they don't all do it, and you guess so you should check. It's an endorsement system. Yeah, it's, it's always it, automatic on there. And what a loss what a loss assessment uh, endorsement does is if there's a total loss of a building, the entire property. We all, we had the fire last year. We know how close it came. We came to some real uh -huh. damage. Uh, if a if a total building is lost. Uh, there's a deductible on that, and if that deductible has to be paid out of paid for by the uh, association, that would be assessed back to the owners. Loss assessment endorsement would cover you for that, so that you wouldn't have any money out of pocket. So you need to check on that. Anything else I should add to that? It also it, it also cover you know heaven forbid we didn't have enough coverage and there was a gap you know again kind of if there's anything above and beyond on a covered loss where the burden comes to the owners in that building, that's where those loss assessment covers come in. Super cheap, check your policy. Um, it is gonna be a separate line item, so you would see it separately. Um, most cases, I think on like ours, we've maxed it out at 50,000, and it's a couple bucks a year. So super affordable, definitely make sure you have it. Um, you know, and if you do need help with insurance, again, you know, I can certainly help with that. I'm also licensed in Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Kansas. We've got, we've got a few licenses around the state. So. Does anybody, anybody have questions any questions for Jennifer? Maybe once her business card or something like that? I, I have a really 
So we actually, our office is out in Three Springs, um, and we also have an office out in Fort as well. So um, and that's my husband in the back, he's joining the business, Dennis, so he's uh, joining me in the, in the business. We've got an office manager at each location. Um, between myself and my team, we have over 40 years of insurance ex expertise, so, and I definitely have a couple of familiar faces and clients in the room, so, um, condo policy is super cheap. Uh, another recommendation maybe that I just say to check is on your liability, make sure it's maxed out at one million. Um, most home, private uh, personal policies only go to a million, but a million dollars, you never know when enough liability insurance is enough. That's where we get into gray scenarios. That's where we get into things that you can't always completely control. And of course, unfortunately, a lot of Sue happy people out there. Most policies, you'll often see like 300,000 on your liability and to go to a million, it's usually a couple dollars difference. And it's absolutely well worth it um, if you don't have that already on there. So that'd be my other tip to look at that. I thought I saw some more hands. Does anybody else have a question for Jennifer? Okay, Jennifer, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming by, Jennifer. And thanks for the donuts. She brought donuts. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Jennifer. All right. All right, Joe. Sorry. Thanks for putting me online. That's okay. Now you can't get into financials. Here, you want to put the financial reports? Which one do you want? The financial reports. April financial report. And there's copy. If you can't see this, there's copies of this on the counter over there in case you didn't pick one up. You can blow through the, the disclaimer page. Okay. All right. So we're looking at the balance sheet. Uh, so this is the first actual report for 2019. It covers through April. The thing, the thing that's good to be aware of with this report is it's early in the year. We, we do a lot of things. Uh, we have a lot of things in the budget that are, are uh, heavily weighted towards later in the year, in the summer when the weather's nice and when work can get done. You'll see that on the capital expense uh, budget page. Uh, there's a report page because there's just not much to do in the winter except keep the snow off the ground, and we know that was a big challenge this year, as you'll see when we get to that line item in the budget. Anyway, as far as the balance sheet, uh, it's pretty simple. It's an accounting thing. It's a snapshot in time. We have, uh, we have current and fixed assets. We have uh, liabilities and equity. Uh, I, I point out a couple of things on here. It's all pretty much in line. Uh, we have a very good cash position, uh, our, our total cash assets, uh, both liquid and, and uh, tied up a little bit in reserves is one point, a little over 1.2 million. So we're very, we're, we're, I don't want to use the term cash flush, but we're, we're in a good cash position. Uh, our liquid assets are somewhat just under $400,000, so we're in good shape for anything that might come up. We keep, we pay our bills on time. There's never been any problem with that. Accounts receivable is close to $200,000. That might seem a little high. It's not really because uh, this, uh, this includes assessments that were due on the day that this report was printed. And as always happens, uh, folks pay their assessments on the last day of the month. They put them in the mail. And then we don't usually receive a, a, a good portion of them until maybe a, into the next into the first week of the of the next month so so that that's not anything to get excited about uh, our accounts payable are very low sixty four thousand dollars worth of accounts payable at this point in time as I say we keep our bills paid so we're we're, very, we're usually very good on that um, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory if you're an accountant I'm not and uh, so with that, I'll move on, unless there's a question there. Well, hold any questions till the end, uh, and I'll take those. So let's move on to the income statements. This is my bread and butter. This is where I'm, where the rubber, where the rubber meets the road. 
But again, this is an early report, it's April, so there's a lot of things in here that are gonna be in catch-up mode and they may look out of line now, but as we move through the year and get towards the fall, it's into the summer, into the fall, they'll, things will equalize. A uh, Couple of things to point out on, uh, on revenues, income. These are all build revenues, these aren't collected revenues, so you have to understand that part as well. Um, the two things that might look a little out of line is accounts 409 and 424. Uh, what happened with those is we budgeted for those in October of last year when we put the budget together. And then both of those items were actually billed uh, to the owners for DVRs <coughs> and, for mail and for the mailbox assessments in Gamble Oak. We had already completed every all the other areas. And those were actually billed in November of last year and collected. So those those low numbers in the actual column there to the left are, uh, they are what they are, but the money was collected last year. That's why it's not shown here, even though it was budgeted for this year prior to that. Uh, but our, our, receivable, our, our income bottom line is about where it needs to be, so we're in good shape there. Uh, administrative expenses. Um, the one thing that is jumps out, and let me pull up my note here for myself. Yeah, uh, legal fees. Um, we had we had a number of things going on, uh, legal matters that that uh, we had to get our attorneys involved in this uh, the early part of this year. So we're quite a ways over budget on that. Um, we had the we had the restaurant, the yellow carrot, the lease termination when they left. Uh, we had this, the whole situation that Scott talked about with Unit 110 and selling that unit and all the all the all the legal problems we had with uh, uh, with with that owner while she was here. We had the land swap land swap land swap with Glacier that was um, finally consummated. It was a uh, part of the year, May 2017. Uh, agreement on the pool lease termination and club memberships uh, where we swapped the three parking spaces that are adjacent to the end of the building down here with uh, that was owned by us with the uh, the green area that's just north of this building and we now own that and Glacier now owns the three parking places so we we've got that taken care of that there was legal fees involving that we had the memorandum of understanding with Glacier over the uh, over the uh, uh, fiber optic infrastructure that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, we had the Cedar Networks contract, which is currently getting done, uh, and and we and and we had some work uh, for some stuff we're going to be talking about later regarding uh, cleanup of the next cleanup of our DCCRs, the next amendment we might do to our to our declarations. And then the, the other big item we had was we had a dispute with an owner uh, over the last 18 months or so uh, that generated a lot of legal fees. Um, and we had those in, in another account where they were, where it was being held. We settled with that owner. Uh, that situation is completed. Uh, but at the time we settled with that owner, we absorbed some some of those legal fees, and those are also included in this number. So <clears throat> I hope that explains that one. Uh, the rest of the administrative expenses are pretty much right in line. Uh, operations um, were a little bit high on building maintenance, count 612. Uh, Dave explained to me yesterday that we've had an inordinate, inordinate number of Water line breaks this year in the property, and the, the plumbing's getting old, and, and we got to continually work to fix it. The big item is snow removal. We've, and that's, and we're not done yet because it snowed this week, and we had to hire shovelers to come around and, and clean up some of the snow. So even in May, we're still having, we're still absorbing some snow removal costs. Not much, but so we we over the last three to five years, we've been pretty much under budget on this, so we've made up for it. <laughs> Big number. <laughs> uh, 
the zeros you see in the in the uh, January to April current spending are <clears throat> all items that we'll get into when the weather gets warmer. Uh, the exterior maintenance items, uh, <clears throat> the fire sprinklers item 640 looks like it's running behind spending, but it's we'll catch up with that because again that's that's something where. Uh, the fire department does its testing and so forth later on in the year. <clears throat> um, let's see. Flipping the page. Are you with me, Gary? Are you staying with me? Yeah. Okay. So the to operations total uh, total of all the 600 accounts is obviously way over budget, and and most of that's attributable to the to the snow removal. Salaries are uh, a little bit under, uh, but they're in pretty good shape. Uh, the employee benefits, which is uh, health insurance for the employees, looks to be a little bit high, but there's a transfer that needs to happen between that account and the, same, and the like account over in the rental program, because we have rental program is where we have the front desk employees uh, and that budget hasn't been hit with uh, with the, with the uh, insurance premiums yet, which will be transferred from there. So that'll even out and look a little better than that. Uh, utilities, uh, water and sewer is just about out where it needs to be according to budget. Satellite TV is a little high. This is because satellite TV, if you have uh, satellite or cable TV in your homes and other places, you know that those are always billed in, billed in advance, so you're paying one month for the next month. So that's looks that's about a month's difference right there. Uh, electricity is a little high. That's because in the winter time, we it, winter time is when we take our biggest hit because we have to heat all the common areas in this building. We have to heat. We have to run the heat tapes uh, that keep our plumbing from freezing out and under the buildings and the outlying areas. <clears throat> and all of that lessens in the summer and into the fall. Uh, everything else there looks pretty good. The numbers at the bottom are out of whack, and you saw why above. Uh, capital. Uh, whole bunch of zeros. Like I said, we a lot of most of these projects involve working outdoors, so we don't we don't get to do much of them until uh, until the spring. So next time we do a report, there'll be a lot more numbers, a lot more numbers filled in there. Uh, we did get into account 812 over the winter, but we actually haven't the billings for the uh, for the dumpsters and the labor for that haven't haven't hit yet, but they will. Uh, the only other major item that we did uh, get to work on this year was line 842. Uh, the central tower elevator is now, <coughs> the guts of it anyway, are now new. Uh, we completed the what was supposed to be about a, <coughs> what was the total cost of that upgrade, Dave? I think it was a hundred and around 180. Yeah. It was supposed to happen last year. Last fall, excuse me. Not as good as water, but it wets the whistle. Um, <clears throat> that that upgrade was supposed to happen last fall, and it didn't because of uh, workload and scheduling with the contractors. So we did pay half of it last year, and we paid the other. We were paying the other half of it, or or what's the balance this year? And we're going to come in a little bit under budget on that. Maybe five to ten thousand dollars because of some savings, uh, some cab work in the elevator. We're gonna later on this year. We're gonna do an upgrade to the interior of that elevator and and uh, finish that off. So we'll spend that money later. But it's basically coming in a little bit under budget, and uh, I guess it's working great, right, Dave? So far, yeah. It's yeah. Only been a week, but... yeah. <laughs> right. Does it? Does it? Seem to function any differently? Or is it? Oh yeah. Does it? Quiet and faster. Is it faster and everything? Good. All right. So money well spent. Uh, so that's about it for capital. It's 
there really wasn't much happening besides those two items. Um, the next page is a snapshot of our permanent reserves and what that's going to look like, what it looks like now and what it might. Uh, all of the interest income at the top is in our, uh, our CD ladders that we have. And, uh, the reason that looks like it's falling behind or it's low is because in most of the CDs we have, they don't, they don't actually post the interest until they mature. And we just took out $240,000 worth of new CDs in November uh, at, a new, at, a, at another bank. And I'm going to do a re little short report on that in a minute. Uh, and those, those CDs don't even begin to mature. The first ones don't even begin to mature until next week. And so that, that interest will post then, and these numbers will come up. But as it shows in the budget, and I did a quick calculation uh, last night, uh, our actual interest on those, uh, on those CD ladders is going to be in the neighborhood of about $11,000 this year. So we're doing a lot better in, in uh, making our money work for us than we used to. Um, uh, the only other item I'd mention on here is the, you'll notice the, uh, under the memorandum only, the elevator project, $90,000. That, that's, we, we, in the budget for the elevator project that I talked about on the previous page, the, uh, we had, we had put in the budget to take $90,000 out of reserves for, uh, for that project to pay for a part of it. Um, so, It'll, and, and we're going to contribute, our budget, we're budgeted to contribute 86000 back into the, into the reserves. So at the end of the year, our reserves this year at the end, even though we spent $90,000, will be about the same as they were uh, 27, uh, 2018. So at the end of 2019, they'll be about the same as they were in 2018. Uh, and the last page is the rental program. Winter months uh, are not as good as summer, so the revenue is a little bit down. We'll, hopefully, we'll catch up that with a, with a, with a good summer, uh, especially if we don't have a fire this year, which we hope not to. It's wetter than hell out there, so we shouldn't. Uh, pretty much the rest of it is... Uh, looks pretty good. Account 604, like I mentioned before, that's a zero, but that's the employee benefits that needs to be transferred, costs, the insurance costs that need to be transferred from the, uh, from the operating budget to, so that the uh, front desk employees pay their share of the, uh, of the insurance costs. And that's it for the financial reports. Gary, throw the... Uh, the uh, uh, reserves report up there quick. Yeah. You realize you have a date of February 1st on this thing? Where? I changed it. Oh. Did you get the wrong one? This is the one you sent me. <clears throat> yeah, this says as of December 31st. Did you update I sent you the I sent you the wrong one. Um, okay, I'm just going to talk to it. Sorry, guys. Oh, good. Okay, the numbers are higher. <laughs> they are higher. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like. High numbers. <clears throat> I, no, I, I'm looking at the one that I put on your, put in the email, and it's the new one. Oh, well. All right. So, as of, as of April 30th, 2019... We have a total permanent reserve fund of $812,716. So that's up from $781,862 on the, on the last report. And that's due to interest income, and we do monthly contributions or quarterly contributions to the reserves. So we don't do it all at once at the end of the year. We do it as the year goes by. Because we, we have an amount that we're going to contribute to reserves as part of the budget, as part of the part of the budget and we'll make those contributions during the year. Uh, that's split into two, two groups. We have 366,748 at a bank in town, the, the Bank of the San Juans, uh, which is not where we keep our operating money. That's at Alpine Bank. Uh, 
so we kind of separated those and we had and we have as i said we have ladder two sets of laddered cds in two different banks first internet bank of indiana and stearns bank in minneapolis minnesota and the total of those two ladders is currently 445,968. So that totals up to the 812 that I mentioned. Um, mm, recommending future, future recommendations. This is same as same as the one that was up there before, so we can show it. It's move at least half, perhaps $200,000 of the reserves that are on deposit with the Bank of the San Juans to a high yield money market savings account, something that's liquid. So we increase our liquidity a little bit because uh, we've sacrificed a little bit of liquidity with the, with the laddered CDs, but we get the <coughs> we get the returns. <clears throat> and then my recommendation to the board is going to I think the board voted on this last last time uh, is to close the account at the Bank of the San Juans and move whatever we have left into Alpine Bank. So we have all our money in a in a place where it's easily accessed. Mm -hmm. That's it. No questions. Okay. We voted on that. Is that is that consistent with our investment policy? I believe we, so. Yeah. The FDIC insurance limitations. Yeah. It, 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 if we if we did add that money back to the bank uh, back to Alpine Bank, we would probably be exceeding that. Two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, we'd be exceeding it. I'm asking my banker. Cyclically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's not a big risk either. So, but. If the board doesn't want to do that, we don't have to do it. Well, I'm not. I'm not. <coughs> I'm just trying to. About that, I understand what you're trying to do. I, I just think we, the board, has approved an investment policy that says 250 is the max. So, I mean, I guess as long as it varies in and out by, you know, five percent or ten percent or something, I, I think we're fine. I just, it I don't want to be, be in that. violation of our own policy. Well, you saw you the, it. you saw the, you saw the balance sheet. It could be more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we don't have to do it. Or we can change the policy. <clears throat> Any questions other than that? No. Any questions for the board? Anybody else in the uh, audience have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them. Um, first of all, actually, I think the requirement to stay under the, the FDIC limit is actually under governing documents. Right? Um, so that's something that uh, the documents would have to be changed. Uh, to to reflect any change in that, but uh, I'm I'm very happy that the board has done a, a great job of um, uh, getting our money from uh, essentially no interest accounts into where it's um, providing return uh, to us. I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, Joe, I do have one question on the uh, income statement for I think it's income statement uh, maintenance revenue. Um, I see that. The income was budgeted at 27.5, and the actual year-to-date is 45,000. That's line item 404. And I know uh, after we changed policy uh, a few years ago, that that maintenance income had had been lower than what we had uh, budgeted for and, and gotten previously. Do you know why that maintenance income is is up now? No, state that question again. Yeah, okay. Look at line 404. I got line 404. Yeah. yeah. The income budgeted was 27.5. That's year well, to that's, date. That's year to date. That's just a. That's just four months worth of 110,000. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, but why is the income uh, significantly more than, than what was prorated uh, through the first? Uh, well, the months? actual is is higher. Yes. Why? Dave? Uh, well, we talked yesterday that the income's actually overstated on there. There is, a, we're going to go down about $9,000 with the uh, adjustment with some income that was basically put on there. So it's not as high as it looks right now. Uh, part of it is just the amount of work with the pipe breaks. Yeah, I, I the costs that go up. There is some income on some of the common areas. Uh, also, I think in there yeah. is uh, contractor fees, and there's been a lot of remodels, so uh, we had an increase in contractor fees. So I guess we're just working harder and making more. Good. Yeah, Jerry, there's uh, if I can. Yeah, I, we talked about this. I guess I guess I just didn't make a note of it on my notes yesterday. Um, <clears throat> again, this is build revenue. 
right? Not right. collected. Right. So a portion of that, how much, Dave? It's almost 10,000. Almost. Can I say this? Almost, almost ten thousand dollars of that was maintenance charges that were incurred by. <laughs> okay, all right. And so you, Julie, just cost us ten thousand dollars. And in part of the, and, and and part of the incentive to get this deal done was to waive those charges. Got it. And, and, and also, a lot of those charges were an incentive for her to quit doing what she was doing. So, how'd that work out? How'd that work out? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. Go ahead. I noticed oh. on the expense, I don't know what my, oh, it's uh, 805 bat mitigation. Yeah. Is that higher than what? It seems to me it used to be around. 20,000 maybe? Yeah, we, we increased the budget. Increased it? Yeah. So this is a pretty good zap on them. It is. <laughs> well, what? The problem, well, I don't want to get into the whys and wherefores, but we, in order to try to keep, to get bats out of here, yeah. I mean, spending a little bit of money gets you nothing. It just doesn't do it. Because they move from here to here to here to here. <laughs> they just, they just, they get evicted and they, Pick up residence somewhere else. <laughs> and it's usually right next door. <laughs> yeah, we can't send them to Vermont. <laughs> good. Very good. <laughs> so in order to keep kicking them out of wherever they are, it takes money. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Jeff. All right, um, so we're going to move on to rules and regs. Um, needless to say, um, our aforementioned uh, tenant or owner that just moved to Vermont uh, forced us to kind of reassess the, the rules and regs process around um, not just the fines process uh, and appeals and that kind of thing, but also um, the smoking policy. I think everybody uh, is aware that we shared a smoking policy um, uh, draft a couple of months ago for public comment. We're going to address that. But we'll start with um, uh, the, the fines and appeals process. Good morning again. Just a quick overview that we do uh, obviously have fines for our violations. Uh, actually, we start at the warning stage and then work our way up uh, depending on what the situation is. And I won't spend a lot of time on this because probably less than you know two or three percent of our community really gets involved in this, but we just wanted to remind people that uh, if there are violations, that uh, we do have a process, a fine process, and then that process, again, depends on what the what the violation is, obviously. Uh, but we felt it was, it was in, in all fairness to go ahead and develop uh, a fine schedule. Um, not a fine schedule, but a fine as in money <laughs> schedule. It really is a fine schedule, I guess. Um, <laughs> Basically, we, we wanted to put structure around it. Right. Yeah. And so we had a purpose, and it's, it's defined. And if you go to the web page and go to Rules and Regulations and scroll all the way down, you'll see the fine uh, information there. Uh, and again, if you have questions on that at any time, so <clears throat> give me a call. Also, as a reminder, when you, if you're cited for some type of violation, you receive a citation. Uh, on a citation is all sorts of information, but in, included in that information is the reminder that you can appeal the citation within 15 days of the date the citation was issued. At that point, uh, we'll schedule a hearing. We'll go through the information again, what happened, the details, um, who was involved, uh, there was witnesses or uh, other people that, that may have input, review that again, and then really kind of give it uh, another, another look at, uh, and then at that point, make a final decision as to does the fine stay what it was? Is it reduced? Could be um, some changes there, but we do have a process. So uh, if you do receive a citation and, and don't feel that that was done correctly or fairly, uh, then you can appeal that through the appeal process. Yeah, I think it's important to note. I, you know, again, we we've had a uh, an inordinate inordinate reason to do this because of some of the issues we were dealing with. But um, you know, we have to remember we all live in a in a common community and. Well, we don't like to have rules and regs. We have to have rules and regs, and 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 the you know the, the fines and the warnings ultimately are, are intended to let people know that hey, you're you're not following the rules and regs. We need you to curb your behavior, and if you don't do it, we're going to fine you. 
Um, so there is a warning process uh, and then there's an escalation fine process. Um, we have had issues where owners have just flat out ignored it. And um, that's why we you know, took the time to really put structure around it. We worked with legal um, to make sure that we were you know, doing so in accordance with, uh, you know, with our documents. Um, you know, I think uh, while we don't like to have to do this, it is part of you know, the, the job of the board to make sure that you know, owners are respecting uh, the other owners' you know, rights and uh, following the rules accordingly. So. And if I can, just, just briefly, we have three steps of, of review for this. Obviously, when the uh, violation first occurs, it's noted at that point, then it comes to, to, to my uh, area for, for my review, and then it goes to the board. So we've really got three different sets of eyes looking over this information because we didn't want to have just one person making a call, making the decision. So there are three uh, sets of eyes that, that look over this, and then if there is an appeal, uh, filed, then we'll have some additional uh, people looking at it as well. So I want to try to make it as fair as we can, uh, make sure people are aware of, of uh, what's involved. And I encourage you, again, if you haven't done so recently, to go through the rules and regulations. It's not exciting. It's like the tax code, but it's <laughs> necessary to have. And everything, I think, is, is pretty well spelled out there uh, in the rules and regulations. So I encourage you to look over that information. If you have questions, comments, want to write hate mail, my email is right there. So send me a message. And uh, we'll go from there. You want me to do a quick overview on the smoking? That'd be great. Okay. I, I'm about ready for cigarette myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on. I don't think so. I don't think we need a motion for the rules and regs. Right. All we did was really clean them up. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the heavy snow this winter, uh -huh. there was a lot of emails sent out move your car, move your car. There was one email sent out, if you don't move your car, you're going to be fine. And with less than 24 hours notice, I, I thought that was a little unrealistic and unfair. What if somebody's got their car parked here and they're out of town? You know, somebody drove to the airport or whatever. Um, I, you know, there was, there was so much snow. I know it was an unusual year, but I don't think... You know, we should be getting notices. Either you move your car, or we're going to, or we're going to find you, or the towing company, or the, or the snow removal company is going to find you. And that was a little ridiculous, I thought. Has that been looked into? Gary, I don't recall the details. Um, I mean, I, I remember we had a lot of emails going on on moving cars this year. <laughs> needless to say, um, you do you want to just clarify anything? Just to move your car every single time. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Just to say, it was it was very threatening email. I thought, move your car, or else we're going to find you. And a big part of that problem is that people leave their cars even if they're here and they don't move them. And it gets very frustrating for us and the snow removal people to try and work around, especially here in the lodge. The lodge is the worst place. In the winter time, we lose about twenty percent of our parking spaces because of the snow. <clears throat> and what we what we want people to do is if they're going to leave their cars here, leave the keys with us so that we can go out and move it. And there are several owners who do that. Leave the keys with us. We will go out and move it. But all too often, people just leave their cars. Well, I don't have any problem with that. It was just the, either you have your car moved by 8 a.m., but we're going to find it. No other explanation. Did we issue any fines? I don't recall ever issuing no. any fines. Okay. No, I don't. I don't even know that it was a real threat. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, no, I just thought that was not appropriate. Okay. Well, point taken. I mean, obviously, uh, the snow is a big problem this year, yes, and when I people, I, I get that. Yeah. I get the fact that people don't want their cars in and like that. Okay. But maybe, maybe what Gary just said could be set out so people know what the options are, rather than you move your car, we don't mind. But I, and also understand this, that that email went out probably the I want to say like the third or fourth time. And it's incumbent on everybody who lives here to realize when we have snow, you should go out and move your cars. I don't think people need to be reminded every single time it snows. I, don't I mean, we've got a we've got a whole lot of other things to do. And you kind of expect people to take on that responsibility themselves. So, so it gets frustrating. I, I think that's where maybe at the beginning of the season, maybe a reminder could be sent out to people. Hey, we're coming up. There were dozens of emails sent out about moving cars. So, I, I mean, to, 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 I, I, but my point is, we, 
if it sounded threatening, it was probably out of frustration. Um, I understand your point, uh, but keep in mind to Gary's but, uh, Gary's uh, comments. We I saw dozens of them. I mean, I'm in Houston. I don't see it. I but know you did. I know you did. I did too. What I'm saying is, at the beginning of the season, could we send something out to everybody and say, "Hey, snow season is coming up. Please remove, you know, remove your cars when this happens. If you're going to be out of town, leave your keys with us. Okay. Can move it too. Yeah. I didn't know. That. I think that's a good idea. I didn't know that. Did anybody here know that? No. Well, we haven't had a snow season like this in, in many years. So. I, I know, but that even that doesn't season. mean that we shouldn't be notified, though. Yeah. No, but I mean, we didn't have a fire either until last year. Right? Well, yeah. But keep in mind, it, it, <laughs> there were many, many emails that went out about moving cars. It wasn't like that was the only email. So, it, point taken. I mean, we I started the newsletter this year. We'll put a we'll put a reminder in the newsletter. I think it but makes no, sense. But nobody knew. I didn't know that we could leave keys with them. If, if we, we, we could leave them on. Okay. We we will include that in the. Uh, Thank you. That's all I'm trying to. That's all I'm trying to. Appreciate the input. Thank you. Can I ask yeah. a question with regard to that? Um, I would go down and be ready to move my car when re at requested, but there were no spaces. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we want everybody to move their cars. <laughs> 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 I All I can recommend, guys, is if we have the problem again, go to the front desk, go to Gary, go to Dave, and just say, okay, you know, I know we need to move our cars. When are these, when are these snow plows going to be here? Where can we move them? Keep in mind, we're just trying to get them out of the way temporarily so they can plow. Okay. I still think it'd be a good idea at the beginning of the season to send something out to the okay, we will, You will do that. You made your point. Right? We get that. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering, because uh, I'm we're from Florida and we spent six months here six months in Florida, uh, and it's quite expensive to have a, uh, an on-site place to store a car. Is it possible I know it to have a, a designated long-term parking area so that if you do go away for a while, We honestly don't have the space. Uh, I wouldn't think that it would need to be paved, uh, but it just occurred to me. Yeah, I, place to put yeah, I don't. I don't. We don't. We don't have the land. We don't have any. Yeah, keep in land. mind, all the land around here is not ours. <laughs> we have what land you see between in, inside our complexes. That's all we've got. We don't have anything else. Yeah, believe me, I pay for storage too. I I'd love nothing more, but we just don't have the space here. So, if you're going to be flying in and out, you know, and you want to leave your car here for a month, two months, three months, get a hold of Ann Dixon. She used to be an owner here. She used to be on the board. She has land. And she lives. It's by it's kind of near the airport. North, northwest of Elmore, northeast of Elmore's Corner. Right. Okay. And and she has said that she will store cars. But she only has the ability to store five. Oh, is that right? That's yeah. That's okay. Right. So you did get in touch with her because it seemed like a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there's other options too. Yeah. Options. There's. Yeah, I store mine out of pack wrap, and yeah, it's not cheap. But I think her most of many storage is still <laughs> still storing cars and RVs down there too. I'm not sure. You might want to check with them. And one of the things we looked at when we redid the parking policy, I guess two years ago, was this very same topic. And besides the issue of we don't own a lot of the land that, that we see between us, the other issue is keeping areas clear for fire, emergency vehicles, that type of thing. So it really, it looked like it would be pretty easy to do right away, but it got really complicated quickly. So the space space issue was really what brought all that to the halt. Okay, let's move on to smoking because I have a feeling that is going to be a, a long topic as well. Um, so as everybody's aware, um, we issued, I think everybody's aware, but just to uh, make it clear, we put out at the suggestion of the, if, if anybody's at the last couple of board meetings, we've had several people approach us about uh, smoking here uh, at the lodger uh, on property in general. Uh, Glacier is a non-smoking facility. The 416 fire brought to light the fact that you know, smoking is something that we probably need to pay a little more attention to. Uh, we have uh, owners that don't necessarily or haven't historically uh, disposed of cigarette butts and whatnot responsibly. Um, after the feedback from the last couple of board meetings, uh, we floated the, the idea amongst the board of a, of a prohibition on smoking and making the property non-smoking. Uh, we put that out for comment. Um, we got 
35, 40 30, comments? 38 people. 38 people Sorry. commented. Um, I'll let you provide the summary, and then uh, we've uh, got a suggested revision to that, um, to, to what we put out originally. And I want to thank everyone that, that wrote in. Uh, what I tried to do is respond back to you within at least uh, eight or nine hours after you wrote me. Uh, but I appreciate the uh, feedback. And obviously, a lot of people, this is a sensitive subject, so we have people that were for smoking and the people weren't. Uh, for, for smoking, but again, the uh, feedback that we got was good. Uh, basically, 38 owners uh, responded. We had uh, 32 of those were in favor of the draft. This is the first draft as, as it stood. Uh, three owners were in favor <coughs> if we could uh, declare authorized exterior smoking areas at, uh, at Tamron and include uh, smoking on decks. One owner threatened a lawsuit stating he would sell his three units if the policy has changed. <laughs> the owner recommended we allow for smoking on unit decks as well. One owner uh, recommended that all current owners be grandfathered to smoke. <laughs> the new people, sorry, you're out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> One owner suggested each uh, owner sign a document that states they will follow our current policy and will never smoke here. And then we had some uh, additional comments about, again, smoking on the decks. People understood that uh, we need to limit smoking, but they felt like they should be able to smoke on their decks for the outlying areas. So again, good, uh, good, good feedback. We ready for the motion or the motion? Yeah. So just, um, we took everything, uh, believe me, we thought long and hard on what the best process was here. Um, I can, I can tell you that, uh, you know, in, in the board meetings, uh, and in an executive session, when we talked about it, uh, we talked about, you know, infringing on people's personal rights. And, and it is something that is realistic and we know that we need to recognize that we've had a property that has allowed smoking for quite some time. Uh, we also needed to recognize, however, that um, we, we do have public spaces and that we've had a lot of issues with uh, people smoking, not just irresponsibly, uh, but also with um, you know, the new marijuana laws uh, causing issues where uh, we've had just, quite frankly, blatant smoking of marijuana throughout the property and a lot of complaints about it. So uh, we've, we're suggesting a revised policy. Uh, it will uh, be put out for, for comment again, since it's different than the, than the prohibition we originally put out. Um, you want to go ahead and go over that? Yeah, and this is lengthy. So uh, again, we'll have this posted. So don't, don't try to write this down because it is quite lengthy, but we're basically want to make a motion that we post the following draft for 10 days to receive owner feedback and, uh, and owner, re owner review. What we're recommending is smoking at Tamron shall be allowed in designated smoking areas only and not in public areas. Smoking will be prohibited in the lodge other than in the designated smoking areas. This includes lobbies, the restaurant, the parking lots, decks, and individual units. This is again for the lodge. No smoking includes all tobacco and marijuana products. The outlying clusters, smoking is allowed only on private decks of the units. Smoking will not be allowed in the parking lots, common laundry service areas, or other public areas. Authorized areas for smoking will be designated. Marijuana products shall be prohibited in the designated smoking areas as well. This is for the outlying clusters. Tamron will continue to monitor for responsible handling of cigarette butts and ashes as it is expected that owners and guests will smoke responsibly. Failure to do so will lead to fines and possible permanent prohibition of smoking property wide. Okay, so that was a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I don't know that we need a motion until we get owner feedback. Well, no, no, you have to have a motion. You have to have a motion, have have a motion and a second, then you can have that, a motion for us to adopt that, motion. to share that policy for public comment and, and possibly, um, uh, uh, you know, make that a new rule. Okay, Okay, so we have a motion. <laughs> oh, do we have a second? We can't have a discussion until we have a motion. So yeah, right. Yeah. Do we have a second, and then we'll have discussion. I'll say. I'll say. Okay, we have a second. All right. Any discussion from the board? Yeah, I must say I'm still concerned about private property and at least some kind of a transition period. Okay. I'm concerned about the lawsuits. I don't want to see us spend thousands of dollars and then we know one small case can cost us thousands of dollars to, uh, there's a, to argue this. There's a whole, we wouldn't be the first. No. There's a bunch of, there's a whole bunch of, of cases of this already being implemented 
in in common interest communities. Yeah, and, and we just for everyone's benefit, we talk, we spent a lot of time. Uh, Joe was <clears throat> referencing the legal costs. We you know, we had legal involved in this. Um, you know, we could have prohibited this in the property. It would have been regret. We uh, we could have prohibited smoking property wide. It would have required a change to the DC, to the DCCRs. Right. Uh, we did not feel that that was the appropriate step. Again, we have people that have been here many years. We have people that smoke. We have people that smoke pipes. We have people that, um, you know, we felt like we needed to take into account, um, for lack of a better description, some way to ensure that we had some kind of grandfathering, so to speak, or at least uh, accommodation for that. So I will speak specifically to the lodge. One of the reasons why uh, we made the determination that the lodge should be non-smoking is because we cannot control the flow of smoke. We have adjoining units, we have, um, you know, common hallways, and it has just become a problem in the last year where smoke has permeated throughout the lodge. We have literally had people come in here to buy and then walk out and say they're not going to buy property here because of the smell of smoke. And yes, a big chunk of that's marijuana smoke, but when it begins to, to affect uh, the quality of life here and the property values here and our ability to resell properties, you know, we as a board felt like we needed to address that. So that's the logic behind the policy. Uh, again, it is open for comment. That's why we, uh, we, we're addressing it here. We'll put it out for public comment. Um, any other comments from the board? Yeah, boy. Why wouldn't you, I, mean, I understand the decks, but why wouldn't you grandfather people in on decks where the new owners come in could not smoke on their decks because the end result is trying to get to a non-smoking facility. If we don't do that, then we're just going to open it back up where people buy condos, smoke on the decks. Again. Well, we're, we're leaving it open for smoking on the decks. Right. Well, but we're not doing say like if I smoked on my deck and then I sold my unit, whoever bought my unit couldn't smoke on the deck. But I, and I don't think we collectively as a board want to have a discussion with somebody who lives right next door to, to somebody who's had a unit for 10 years out there smoking a cigar and the person next door isn't allowed to, right? I, that's, a, that's a tough argument. To me, it's... Even if you didn't have I, two next door, it would be tough to police I, that. Yeah. It would I be mean, you've got somebody notices some guy smoking on his deck. Oh, when did he buy? Did he buy before or after? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I mean, I believe I, me, I, I understand. Saying, we we thought saying, through it. If somebody bought the one next to me, I wouldn't want them smoking, but if they couldn't smoke if they if, if it wasn't there, yeah, I'd call them in and say they're smoking on their deck. Yeah. I don't know. Just you know that, that is a tough one. And, you know, if you look at uh, condominiums throughout cities, and whether it's in urban settings or in more you know settings such as this, restaurants, even cities, um, and I'm interested in the 10-day period in terms of, of the feedback because one of the things. I actually dealt with this as a city is what are the common denominators? Common denominator for the lodge, for the outside areas. You know, if you're in the lodge, you don't have a deck, but if you're on the outside areas, you have a deck. And to your point, it's okay, how do you police that? And like Joe, you said, when did you buy? When did you? So what we ended up doing is are there common denominators that makes that transition a little bit easier? And there's some that are out there, but I, I think, and Eric, to your point, and we've discussed this, is boy, it's hard to, to, to create that balance. So if you find common denominators and you get input and the majority of the people have a certain thought process on it, you know, it's a little bit easier to say, okay, we're going to put this policy into practice. And here's when we're going to do it, and here's what happens moving forward. Any other comments from the board? Diane, I knew you were going to ask me that yeah. comment, so how about the audience? <laughs> and we don't need any baggies, by the way. How did <laughs> Glacier become a totally non-smoking community? And we can't. I think we need to... All I know is the problem is the bad smokers have made it impossible for the people who might be good smokers. And all I want to say is 311 I don't think those people would have bought if this was a non-smoking community. No, there's no reason to call anybody out. I understand your point. How Glacier did it, I'm sure they put it in their original 
covenants. It's a private club. It's a private club. You know, we've been around since 1974. We've allowed smoking, you know, and still to this day do. We're trying to figure out a reasonable balance between personal rights and taking care of, you know, what we believe is our responsibility as a board to protect the, you know, the interests of the owners and the property. I also believe Glacier members can smoke inside their own homes. Private property. Yeah, it's private property. It's not a common element. So when you say smoke free, it's smoke free where it's, they're not on private property. The club is. The club is, yes. Smoke free. The community areas. The community, I don't think is. Is that right, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. And as well, the golf course, although not enforced very well. And the other thing I want to share, and I probably shouldn't even say this out loud, but we're not, we're not looking to go out there and be sniffing other people's doors. Right. I mean, this isn't something that we're going to be running around property with the smoking police. What we want to do is have a reasonable policy that drives responsible smoking. We have, you know, a revised uh, rules and reg policy around that and right with fines and whatnot if, if that doesn't happen. But um, again, you know, we're we want to be reasonable. Uh, but that's, again, why we're asking for comments from the from the crowd as well. See? Uh, this winter, a lot of people were going out and smoking in their cars in the parking lot. <laughs> and even though I despise the cigarette smoke and everything, I thought that was a way for them to be able to do it outside of the building. Yeah, I, we can't stop what people do in their cars. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions. Number one, where is this designated smoking area going to be? <laughs> Uh, we will advise you when we figure that out. <laughs> I, so, I, I, that so logically, what, we, what we've what we talked about is let's find a place across the parking lot. I don't know why we ever have a had a designated smoking area 12 feet from the front door. That right. probably was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll likely put it across the parking lot, which means we'll take another parking spot probably, and everybody will be screaming at us for that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, we need to find a place that makes sense. I did ask, uh, you know, I talked to Gary and David at one point about starting to do that experience. Exploration. We don't know yet, but we would have to probably build a gazebo. Obviously, we've got to have uh, receptacles to dispose of butts so that we it give people the opportunity to do, to do so responsibly. But we haven't made that the determination yet. Okay. And my second question is, if the majority voted to make this a non-smoking facility, why can't we have the choice of either voting on that or this. We got 40 comments, less than 40 comments. We didn't have a majority. Well, but didn't he have 35 out of 40? 40. 40. Yeah, majority. That's, How many owners? The majority of the comments. We and got. we had a lot of people that were silent. Yeah. Yeah. Those responded. Yeah. Jerry. Uh, Jerry Q2 uh, 623 High Point. Um, I just want to remind everyone that even though there's been a tons of uh, precipitation over, over the winter. The Four Corners area still remains extreme drought area, and that once this moisture is gone, it won't take anything to start more fires similar to what we had um, last year. Amen. So uh, that, that to me is a paramount you know, consideration. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at this now. Yeah. Well, Ron, I'm in 504, yeah. 505. I have two questions. Um, question number one is, um, your who, who's going to vote on this? Just the board, right? Well, at this stage, we have a motion to uh, to share the policy and, and get public comment, and then make a determination as to whether we incorporate it into the rules and regs. Yeah, the rules and regs are set by the board, not by the homeowners. That's correct. Right? <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. That's right. Second question or comment: You're talking about restricting smoking. I'm a non-smoker, so. Basically, I don't care as long as you don't do it in my face. Um, you're talking about setting a policy of non-smoking, including individual units, and you just finished saying, well, gee, we'll look the other way if you're smoking in your unit. Well, I didn't say that. In, in, your, in his car. Prior to that, I think you said you weren't going to go around sniffing under your I said doors. our goal here is not to have the smoking police running around and sniffing under doors. Yeah, and, I, and I don't blame you. So. I'm just saying. If we're going to set a policy, please let's set a policy that we're going to enforce. We will. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The, 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 again, 
we, we're, if we're going to put a policy in place, we've got rules and regs around it. If people are abusing it, we will enforce it. And, and we, we have a smoking area. We will we'll have a smoking area for a reason. And um, again, you know, this is open for comment. We're, we haven't done anything yet. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, this is um, information that I got in Florida. It's it's just not answering your question, but. Back in the 70s, I worked there in TV and advertising. And the state of Florida, in the middle, in the middle of the 1970s, had an ele a, a vote go in the whole state to uh, stop uh, smoking in restaurants, which passed like crazy. Now, this doesn't answer your question of who's smoking but the general public is against it. I would agree. The majority of people are against it. Mean, I mean, the vote was 80% mm -hmm. in the restaurants. Couldn't do it. So it's out there. So when you're talking about here and there. It's it's out there, but it's, again, it's I can, I, I can name seven restaurants in Dallas I can go sit down and have lunch at, and somebody can sit down next to me and smoke. So, again, I understand your point. Yeah. But it's not universal. I, I think it was I think it was pretty good, and I'm in New York and Vermont a lot, uh, in Florida. But it's coming down. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Terry Demont, eight forty nine. Um, I might have misread the the uh, proposal that we were all sent. Uh, it seemed to me and to one of my neighbors that smokes that uh, you're trying to prohibit smoking within a unit out in the outlying areas. The original draft we put out was a was a was a total prohibition. Right. Um, we opened it up for comment, and a lot of the comments, several of the comments we got back, uh, were you know basically around uh, you know the right to, to to smoke within their unit. And Glacier, which was held up as being smoke free, those people that own their units are uh, obviously permitted to smoke within the unit itself. It's their home. And I'm speaking of homes yeah. rather than units. So the, just so I know and I can pass it along, the smoking within the unit in an outlying area is okay as long as you don't uh, smoke marijuana on your deck. I don't think that's what we said. Uh, that's why. I'm what what our suggestion, you know, our our general suggestion in the policy, and again, this is open for comment, uh, is that if you're going to smoke, smoke out, smoke on your patio. Um, you know, we do have, uh, again, we do have adjoining units, even down there too. So that's part of what we're trying to solve for. So just so I'm I'm understanding, it's okay to smoke on your deck, but it's not okay to smoke in your unit if you're. That's the way we've set it up. That's that's what we're proposing. Yes. So is the deck <coughs> counterproductive to um, the threat of fire within the <coughs> within the property? Only I mean, if, I mean uh, that seems like it's uh, only if the owner is. It, it's not if the owner is being responsible. Well, if the owner I, is not I, being responsible, then it is. And you, it you, the you are correct. The decks here. Yeah. The policy is going to encourage responsibility. Decks. The decks, yeah, not 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 the lodge. Yeah. We're not allowing smoking on the lodge on the decks in the lodge, only in the clusters. All right. Are you talking about back decks and front decks? Because some of the units have lodge decks in the front too. Uh, most of them have back decks. Uh, what are they? S units? What are the S units don't have a back deck. Yeah. Yeah. The S units do not. So that okay, yeah. they would. So my keep it again. My the, question is. It said private decks. Private decks is what the way it reads. So, so does that include the little condo unit also? Yes. An S unit has a private stairway right. and a deck. Again, all the other we're decks considering are the common. big deck where you've got five different entrances to five different units, public areas. That's public. Okay. Well, let me just, just so we all understand. So there's a house next to me that has a <coughs> front deck and a set of steps. It's the only, so they're going to be allowed to smoke on their front deck since it's a private it doesn't go to any other unit. That would be the that would, that be, would a be a private deck. deck. Okay. Yeah. I'm Bob Fraser, uh, High Point five nine nine six hundred. I believe we have. Don't we have a prohibition against any fire 
on decks, as in charcoal grills and or propane. Open flame. Open flame. Yeah. Open, open flame. Open flame. Yeah. Well, wouldn't wouldn't uh, smoke be open flame no. to some degree? No. It, uh, and are we are cigarette? We or, cigarette's not an open flame. It's not. You know, I wouldn't consider it one. I you know. I guess it's a matter of interpretation. <laughs> you do have to have an open flame to light. No, not necessarily. You could have one of those electric lighters. You know. I just wonder whether we're not. Are we split? We open we're starting to split hairs. Yeah. We are, and I, you know, I think this is, that's what this discussion would do. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, unless there's any other comments that haven't already been addressed, I'll go ahead. One more. Martinez three three seven. Yeah. Um, one article I had read recently was that uh, concerning medical marijuana that. That jury's still out on that. I, the articles I read said associations can tell you you can't smoke marijuana in your unit if it's voted by the association. However, the jury's still out on medical marijuana, and that hasn't <laughs> gone up to the court system yet, as of yet. So that's something you probably need to take a look at, because if you tell them they can't do that, and then you're taking their medicine away and they're prescribing the, 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 it's the quick, an, the quick yeah. answer to that is there's edibles. Yeah. edibles. Yes. And, and again, there's response. <clears throat> there's responsible smoking, right? I, you know, a lot of people use vapes. You know, it's a, there, there's no smell associated with that. You've got edibles. Yeah, I don't want to get into that particular argument because, to your point, it hasn't been addressed in the courts. But it is something we know is uh, you know, a, a possible challenge we might end up with. So any other comments quickly that haven't been addressed because we open keep in mind this is opened up for public comment so you can address send all of these in to us send them to ron send them to the board ron and the board <laughs> cc <laughs> I don't know what I am. all right one more in the back Manhart, 772. Uh, i think maybe a good idea i think the whole thing is about being people responsible that is absolutely the whole idea. If the person next to me, I mean, and where I am, there's all kinds of pine, which is probably one of the most flammable things there is. And I went to Dave and I said, I think, anyway, he sent Mark down, but they had an ashtray right on their deck. And there was all kinds of cigarette butts they were flicking out there. And I thought, that's kind of dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I made them aware of it, and I think they spoke to the people. Because they still had, they still smoked out there, but there were no more cigarette butts out there. And that's the exact that, irresponsible behavior we're trying to change. One of the things I think about doing when, you, when you're going to send this out, comment, maybe you should kind of add an educational component to it, because there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there about, you know, how Carol was smoking, what it caused. <clears throat> you might get a few pictures and send that along, whether they open up or not. A lot of times, the visual makes a big difference. And I think when you come here and you talk about it and you look around, it's it's not as bad as it was as I thought it'd be. Because I was I hadn't been here for a year since I was evacuated, and it's not as bad as I thought it'd be. But it doesn't take much to do a lot of damage. Okay. So my suggestion is to maybe have somebody do some research. Gary's pretty good at stuff, and I don't want to put any more on him. Uh, Take some pictures of some stuff that's happened just because of Carol was smoking. That's a good. Yeah, that's a, so we do have pictures, by the way. Um, so it is something that we can definitely do. All right. So we have a uh, a motion we need to address, and we have a second. Um, I think we've got all the comments. So we want to go ahead and take a vote. Did, we want, did you? I'm sorry. You had another comment. No, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, do we want to uh, let's have a vote to approve the motion that we um, uh, introduce the policy and share it with um, the owners to uh, have comment relative to a change in the rules associated with smoking. I have a all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Rick, there we go. Who's there? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. All right. That would be uh, 7 0. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, uh, Joe uh, alluded to in the legal costs comments around the DCCRs. Um, the last time we revised the DCCRs was 2009, if I remember correctly. Um, a lot has changed property wide uh, as it relates to um, uh, changes that, that have kind of uh, reared their head uh, 
on, on a, a bunch of different topics. So um, in a nutshell, we as the board have been discussing starting to make those decisions. Um, uh, obviously, that does require an owner vote uh, to make revisions to the DCCRs. Uh, we haven't identified everything as, at this point, but just to kind of provide some examples, uh, we still have language in there around the pool and spa. We don't have a pool and spa, so we need to clean up uh, language uh, related to that. We have uh, language in there related to the reserves that um, need to be updated because legislation changed after 2009, uh, and we need to update our DC DCCRs as a, as a result of that. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we made some changes relative to maintenance. Uh, of um, you know, plumbing and, and things outside of um, outside of a unit, uh, th that cleanup needs to happen as well. Uh, we're also, I've mentioned in the last couple of board meetings, been working to get financing in place uh, so that we can get Fannie and Freddie conforming financing here. In order to do that, we have to change language in the DCCRs that um, that provides for uh, notification to lien holders uh, of changes that we might be making to the property. Uh, so that they would have um, notification of that. That doesn't give them a voting right, but it does give them uh, notification of any changes that we've made. So in order for us to qualify for that, we have to change the DCCRs to support it. Uh, the goal is to present um, those changes uh, before uh, the ballots go out for uh, the September elections, uh, and likely we'll have those ballots, uh, the, the ballot for the changes on the DCCRs go out with that. Uh, that is the time when we get uh, you know, the most uh, owner feedback is uh, during that that voting cycle uh, so the goal is to put it out uh, at that stage so um, anything else the board wants to add to that okay um, I don't know if there's any questions about it but it is something that we will share uh, the, the recommendations when we get to that point yeah Ron do you expect to include uh, a formula for our assessments so we may understand how and why we're being charged what we're being charged versus what another unit is paying of a different size and a different type? Uh, we haven't determined if that's going to be part of it yet or not. We've got a half a dozen things on the list right now. But that's a priority? Uh, that's one of the topics of discussion. We may include it in this change. We may not. We're not there yet. Any other questions? Okay. Water update. Um, <laughs> Have not a whole lot to update, but well, we do have. There's a few things we continue to request information. Yeah, and and we're we're making some progress on that, which which is um, happy to tell you that um, Glacier's hired a law firm out of Denver, and uh, our attorneys are working with them to start the negotiations on this process. Uh, one of the things I did want to say is that um, I wanted to point out Jerry. Uh, the amount of work that he's done is remarkable over the last five or six years. What's even more remarkable is how accurate his numbers have been. I, I, I don't know how much you know of how much work this guy's done, as has Joe, Eric, John, and others. But it is, it is truly amazing to me. I've got a background in that area. But what this guy's been able to come to us with numbers, with a history to allow us to be at the point moving forward is, is truly something I want to make sure everybody knew that this guy's work, as well as others, is, is allowing us to, to move forward. So to me, that's a pretty notable, um, you know, update. And I, I wanted to thank Jerry personally yeah. for what you're Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. yeah, and just so everybody's aware, Glacier um, uh, started a Elder Creek Water Company, I think is what, what it's called. Uh, so they've set up, uh, you know, a quasi uh, utility company. Uh, to manage the water for not just Taco, obviously, for their properties and for the surrounding properties, Rockwood and others that uh, that they supply water to. Um, uh, they did hire a law firm, um, to Greg's point, uh, based in Denver. Uh, they um, This law firm is a very reputable law firm that has represented water rights and water um, companies around the state. Uh, Ken Golden has been... Uh, conversing with that with that law firm and we're still in the early stages of, of trying to understand uh, and get the necessary information we need so not a lot more to update uh, we'll just continue to update you as, as we do as we do no more and move through this process so any questions yes sir 849 uh, I'm wondering about the quality of the water with the breaks in the line is there some method for checking the quality of the water that we're getting in the units? 
Uh, I don't know if you can speak to that. I know they're required annually to do. There's an annual report put out by the by the water company. It was previously put out by Glacier. I assume going forward it'll be put out by Elbert Creek Water Company. Uh, the latest one is on the uh, is on the website. Gary, do you recall what time of year we generally get that report for the previous year? It covers a calendar year. Usually, it's in the spring. So yeah, we should be getting a a, a new report that covers. 2018. Uh, and is that disseminated? It's on the yeah. web. It's on the website. Yeah, actually, you should get it in the mail. I mean, I, I, I've no, received. No, we it. don't. We don't mail it. No, I've received no. it directly. In I've the mail. never gotten it in the mail. I've, I've received it in the mail too. Yeah, I have too. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. I think they're required to send out an annual study of okay. the, yeah. and the annual findings. Yeah. And we do post it on the association website. So the most recent ones there. Yeah, and just for everybody's information, if you want to Google Elbert Creek, I mean, they have a website. There's not a whole lot out not, there. They just started there. it. But there is a website for Elbert Creek Water Company. What? I'm sorry, what was that? I said there's a website for Elbert Creek Water Company. Elbert? Elbert. Elbert. E-L-B-E-R-T. Elbert. 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 Yeah, Elbert Creek Water Company. Elbert Creek is right over those, right on the other side mm -hmm. of that ridge over there. Well, two ridges over, I think, that it's yeah. there. Yeah. So I suspect when they do release that study, it will be posted there as well. Um, as I said, I, that website probably hasn't been around for 60, 90 days. We just found it yesterday for the first time, so at least I did. Yes, sir. Um, I've got a zero water filter, and it comes with a, a meter on it for total dissolved solids. And a year ago, mine would read about 450, which is up. You know, that's up in the ozone someplace. But after they did that work last summer... Mm -hmm. On the water system, it's down to like 275. It's still high, but a lot better than it used to be. What's it measuring? The TDS, total dissolved, total dissolved solids. solids. So the water is, at least the total dissolved solids have gone down since we worked on it last summer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, we've, it's, it's also going through a bunch of old pipes here. So, um, okay. The other factor is, particularly during the, the early months of the year, you're getting more well water than you are river water, which will likely have more dissolved solids in it as well. And it's also very hard. Yeah. Yes. Okay, no other comments on that? Questions? <clears throat> All right, we'll move on to um, TV, fiber, internet. Um, Joe? Yeah. Uh, Gary, you want to put that little report up there? This isn't a, this isn't a whole... Yeah, okay. This isn't a whole lot different than the report I gave in <clears throat> February. Um, we're, we, we're still on Glacier's internet system for the short term, likely uh, until mid to late summer of this year, though some areas might get converted over to the new system sooner <coughs> than others. Um, the, uh, we did reach an agreement with uh, Glacier <laughs> on the ability to use the conduit infrastructure that connects our buildings but runs through Glacier property. So although even though it connects our buildings, it's still, it's still the, those conduits are, are the property of Glacier. But we do have an agreement with them now to, uh, to be able to utilize those, uh, those conduits or our contractor can utilize those units and we do uh, those conduits and we do have and we do have an agreement with uh, an internet service provider, Cedar Networks, who has begun installation here on the property. The lodge is totally wired now. There's, if, you, if you're a lodge owner and you look on the inside over your front door, there's a, a little white box about this big, and that's your wireless access point that'll be your, uh, that'll be your private internet network at some point in the very near future, we hope. Um, the uh, the, inst the installation of the uh, of the rest of the infrastructure uh, uh, fiber optic in the in those conduits that I referenced and the uh, and the internal fiber fiber infrastructure and wireless access points in the outlying areas is still yet to be done. Uh, I spoke with uh, the project person over at Cedar yesterday, and he indicates to me that. Uh, uh, as soon as the, fly, the, the, block, the blocking point right now is that in order to cut over our phone systems uh, and in, an, an upgrade to the CenturyLink uh, system that our signals are carried on into the, you know, out to the rest of the world, our 
in need of an upgrade. And that upgrade has been scheduled by CenturyLink uh, to happen soon. It just, has, it just hasn't happened yet. And Gary, have you received anything from Norm Polk or? I'm told it's being scheduled. Unfortunately, that's all I have. Okay. Well, so we don't know when it's going to get put in. They keep telling us it, it's, it's like it's next week, and then it's the next week, and then it's the next week. Um, what I'm told, what, I, what we've learned is that some companies are quick to respond. CenturyLink isn't one of them. Uh, so, uh, and, and, uh, and unfortunately, though, we're going to be tied in with Cedar Networks, which they could, they could light up the lodge right now with Internet. The only problem is we'd be cut off from, you wouldn't have a telephone because we'd be, we can't have both systems. And so, uh, so we have to wait for CenturyLink to complete that upgrade. We keep hearing it's going to be right away. Uh, the lodge can be lit up and completely functional within five days after that, uh, after that uh, upgrade occurs. So that's, that's the critical path right now. Proofing the conduit between our complexes and doing the uh, installation of the fiber infrastructure and wireless access points throughout the rest of the property will start uh, as soon as the weather improves. So I guess that's now. Uh, they kind of got delayed because of the snow we had last week or so and colder weather and because they're going to be working underneath the buildings out in the outlying areas and so forth. Uh, but I'm told that we're best case scenario, as soon as this, uh, if, the, if this upgrade, CenturyLink upgrade happens within the next week or two, that we could be fully up and running by mid to late July, property-wide. So another update will be coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we anticipate that, you know, Assuming no problems with conduits, um, you know we'll we'll have everything in place before the end of the summer, but probably sooner. So we'll yeah. see. You have a comment? Just a quick question, Joe. Um, as I remember, they put the cable above ground to be able to work on the lodge. Is that what that cable been um, put back in the conduit yet? I don't know that. Okay. I don't. I don't have. So it. that's another potential that. interruption, but hopefully they'll do that before. <clears throat> I think it's running right behind us. Yeah, yeah. I think it's still. <laughs> well, that was the, the whole reason we could. That's the whole reason we could get the lodge lit up that quick is because <laughs> the connecting point is just down at the bottom of the hill here. Right. Yeah. And we didn't bury the cable. We just laid, laid it on top of the ground. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. But I, okay. So that still needs to be buried too. Yeah. And I think that's a. That's as another. Far weather, as that's BJ's, another weather thing. So. That's, a, <laughs> well, that's a weather thing, and that's yeah. a one day thing. I mean, that's a you know pulling that, con, okay. pulling that cable through the conduit and hooking it up on both ends is. So hopefully that'll be done Wait. before CenturyLink. So we'll have another interruption. Yes, sir. Um, Christopher Smith, 837-329 at 501. Um, question on the TV satellites. We noticed um, for 837 in Pinecone that the TV went out twice within a month for the snow. And it looks like the dish is covered with snow. Is there any talk to have it? Positioned. Well, there's, they're, they're actually heated, mm -hmm. so if, if, the, if the snow wasn't melting, then likely um, the heater or the element, whatever they do to melt it, wasn't uh, functioning properly. It was more than that. There, I mean, they were buried in snow when we turned them off. They, I'm sorry, they turned, they turned the heater off? Is that what somebody yeah, said? the heaters turned off, Dave? Mm -hmm. No. Because I thought they were here in the, the lodge. They took them out. <laughs> In that uh, young kid, yeah, you had said he had to go plug it back in. We had some go out, but we never turned one off. We're not talking about just a little snow on the dish. They were completely buried. Okay, I got you. So it was like a snowbank kind of thing. Not, okay. I mean, I, maybe Dave can address it, but they're not positioned right. They're too they're too low, and so it's snowing and it's just piling all up on the dish. Okay. Well, well we we, we probably didn't know that until we had snow. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know which one he's talking about, Dave? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can certainly have the guys look at it. I, again, you know. Is that something we need to address with Groove, Dave? We can look at it. I mean, some of it, we did have to go clear some snow that built up on roofs, but once again, well, we had five feet of Is snow, that the only so antenna that we've had a problem with? We had two or three like that. I mean, the it seems to me it would be easy to, you know, just put them on a taller, <sighs> taller stand. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, Dave, we talked to you about this earlier, and you said you were going to talk to Groove. We, we will, yeah. 
Okay. Okay. But I don't know what, what the results are. Because I guess what I'm hearing now, it's like, sounds like it's all new information. No, no, I, I was aware of it. No, we'll, we'll address it with group. Yeah, Ron? Uh, 504, 505, Hyman, uh, just to follow on the TV. Uh, we had an outage after being away for months and came back in, and, and neither of our two TVs were operational. And it was a problem not with the satellite dish and not internally, but a simple telephone call to direct TV. We had the same problem at the island when we have power down and it can't accept the pings from direct TV to reactivate. Uh, do we not have 24 seven service from group? And how is that supposed to work? Because we just got our TV back up after reporting at six o'clock last night. Just curious. We have, we have support, right? We have support. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a phone call. Yeah. Well, who's well, responsible to make that call then? Because maintenance and front desk was notified and neither was aware of what to do. Um, I don't know what, like, do we want to give the owners the numbers directly? What, I, don't, I don't know what that makes the most sense. We haven't uh, had this long enough to really put yeah, a process in place. Our way around. Let's do this one, I'm asking. Yeah. I guess we'll have to, we'll yeah. have to look into it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, 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 I guess what we'll have to do is just address it, and then we'll put something on the website of, of how to, uh, you know, how to deal with it. Um, you know, keep in mind that you know, the, the maintenance folks are limited on what they can do, also. Well, it's just a simple telephone call to Direct TV. Well, understood. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions about TV internet? Okay, you have the, you did get that unit number for the dish, right? Uh, restaurant space. Um, we did have, so nothing really has changed as it relates to the restaurant space as far as having a tenant. Um, we did have, what, three, two or three people express interest, um, all of which have either gone radio silent or backed out um, for a variety of reasons. Um, there's no real change there. What we have done is, is um, uh, given uh, Heather the authority to uh, to use that space for private events. Uh, she's rented it out for a couple of um, uh, wedding events or something. I think we have two or three events uh, over the course of uh, the summer already booked. Uh, it is available for you know for for rental if if we wanted to do you know if anybody wanted to to do an event there or anything like that. Uh, haven't really gotten any firm plans with it yet. Uh, we've talked about a, um, you know, we, we talked about a general store. Obviously, we'd have to find a way to man that and run it. Uh, but no further real discussions have gone with that. To be brutally honest with you, we were a little busy with 110, and we haven't really focused on it, um, other than, you know, having a couple people approach us directly on it and uh, ask, you know, express an interest in it. Um, you have anything you want to add? I no, mean, we do. We have one couple that still has expressed interest, interest but I have not heard back from, from them since May 8th. Okay. Yeah, that was the radio silence I was referring to. Okay. I don't have a great update, but I have talked to the agent that if, if you're talking about, mm -hmm. okay, yep. um, they need to sell a house right. before they can make a move, but they're still <coughs> interested. Right. And that's what they had. That's what they had told me. I had shared with them the restaurant results that we had received, so that they knew more about what people were looking for. Mm -hmm. So I did share that information with them back in April, and I didn't hear back from them. So then I reinitiated an email back to them, which they said they had not received. So I reforwarded my email to show that I had communicated with them. And they said, thank you for the information. They would dig into it. Um. Gary has continued to do his, uh, you know, his, his trivia nights. Uh, you've got one tomorrow night, right? Or is it tonight? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Okay. Um, a rerun. And we're going to continue to encourage people to come down and, you know, if we have a sporting event or something we want to open to, uh, open up for, uh, we do have TV in there. Uh, it is our space, so we're not limited on having the direct TV in that space today because it's not a commercial space. Uh, so we'll continue to, to use it for that. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to, to – we've talked about maybe – if people are interested in, uh, in uh, forming a committee on, with some owners involved involvement on it, we're open to ideas. Um, right now, as everybody knows, the restaurant's success has been uh, limited with the last three or four, three, three, three. Well, um, actually, four when you consider the old deli that never did well. Okay. <laughs> it was run by DMR. Yeah. Yeah. 
So our general belief was if we were going to do something there, it needed to be from with an, with an owner involved uh, that had a vested interest in the property. Um, uh, we, that's who we were approached by was uh, a prospective owner and an existing owner. Uh, we did do some uh, some checking in town and, and tried to see if anybody would be interested uh, in town. Haven't really had any anybody bite yet, so uh, nothing really to to add to that. I don't. Anybody have any ideas that they'd like to share? Yes, sir. Okay. Forty nine. I, I wonder if uh, Tamron is willing or able to subsidize uh, a restaurant to in order. It's obviously hasn't made money. We've been uh, subsidizing a restaurant, yeah. <laughs> so the answer is yes, we're willing. Um, we we talked yesterday uh, about a concept of a private club. Um, we don't know what mechanically what that looks like. Can we serve alcohol? If we do, how do we? You know, what are the rules around that? Um, if it were private, obviously it would be for owners only, or owners and guests. It would people from uh, off the street wouldn't be able to uh, to just come in and join. Uh, or come in and uh, you know and take advantage of it. Um, we have a great kitchen. We think there's value in that. We think that you know that's why I was when I mentioned the general store. What we were more thinking is someplace where you know people could, could come down and get quick sundries, whatever they wanted. Maybe have takeaway sandwiches, but serve a basic basic menu. Somebody's got to run it, right? We haven't uh, had anybody volunteer to come in and do that, other than the couple of folks we were talking to. So we'll just keep you know we'll keep working at it. When is, uh, I, I know that uh, Heather has two things booked. When, when are they? July, you know? June and October, I think. June and October? Yeah. Weddings. Wedding uh, uh, rehearsal dinners. You know, we might want to consider repairing some of the holes in the walls and painting. Yeah. Because it just doesn't look that good right now. Yeah. She brought that up yesterday. Um, she well, she brought up painting. I mean, I think uh, our response was... But it, it might not be something we want to spend money on. I don't have a problem fixing holes in walls, obviously. Um, and if we fix holes in walls, then obviously th then we may need to paint something. So I don't know. I haven't looked at it, so I don't, I don't know what the damage looks like in there. Come tomorrow night and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a true question. Yeah. Did one ten do it by chance? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, let's get through the, the, the last couple of items, or the actual last one is really the rental program, and then we'll take a break. Um, rental program, um, inventory's down uh, considerably. Well, there's, uh, uh, I just told Heather I'd give this for her, by the way. Um, I think historically, Heather has, has had about 140, 130 units participating in the rental program. Uh, we're continuing to see a trend towards owners. Uh, buy properties here and uh, not opt to put them in the rental program. Uh, she currently has uh, 54 rentals that are part of the Tamron Vacation Rentals Program, another 44 that are VRBOs and seven purgatory properties. So it's down, it's down considerably. Uh, it's probably good news for the for for those owners that are in the rental program because they may have um, uh, obviously more um, more activity as a result. Uh, we are, you know, we do anticipate continuing to see. Um, uh, you know, stronger rentals because of the golf course. Uh, as we mentioned, the wedding parties. Uh, uh, Glacier does. I don't even know how many weddings. Do you have any idea how many, Jim? Uh, too new to. Yeah, you're too new to know. Uh, they did a boatload last year. That I know. Well, Heather, Heather said there was. Heather said there was like 14 or 15 events on the books over there. Last year they had 11. Right now. Okay. And 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 we're expecting that we'd get. Uh, you know, lodging, lodging requests for that. Yeah. If not, if not, uh, ancillary parties and meetings and things like that. But, yeah, we uh, there was just a, a wedding I think last weekend, and we got yeah. a bunch of rentals out of that. So yeah, yeah, we you know we, I think you know we, we expect to see that continue to, to pick up. Obviously, the amenities have helped out a lot. Um, having access to golf has helped out a lot. Um, you know, Ann is still Ann Dixon is still very active uh, marketing everything on, on, in social media. Uh, we've got. Uh, in, a lot more activity there, uh, which again, it's very hard to measure uh, how that uh, you know turns into results. But you know, she did, she's been doing postings about Iron Horse, for example, for three months. Uh, I would guess we have people staying here uh, because of Iron Horse this weekend. So uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to try to you know to, to try to drive that. 
Um, you know, certainly having the mine shaft uh, has you know replaced what we uh, you know what, what we lost with yellow carrots, so that that hasn't uh, really hurt us yet. Um, but you know, we'll we'll continue to see how this works out as far as um, the, the, the rental program goes. The um, I think uh, you know activity wise. Uh, I think this last summer we we were up considerably last summer, uh, and we you know we think that's because of the amenities. So we're expecting the same thing this year. Ron, can we get the yellow carrot signage removed? Yeah, you know, we're, we have a lot of spring projects that are kind of the to do list that didn't get done last year with Glacier that we're still working on. That is one of them. I was wondering yesterday when I drove in if I could just pull it off actually, but I don't think it's our sign. <laughs> Yeah, it's 50% our sign. It's 50, yeah, what well, we paid for it. It is our sign. The one that's on the island right there? Is that ours? That's our sign. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Jerry Q2623, I wanted to um, acknowledge uh, Scott, Gary, and Dixon, and Heather for putting together that incredible newsletter uh, that just Very came out. That's the first you. we've ever had, so yeah. thank you. It's, it's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Well, Anne gets a lot of the credit because she was prodding me for <laughs> six weeks. Scott, when are you going to get this done? So, um, But no, I appreciate that. I just felt like we needed to have um, some kind of communication uh, that's intended to continue quarterly. Uh, there's just not that much to report any more frequently than that. But, you know, it's a good place to put the reminder, for example, about moving the cars. Uh, you know, subtle reminders like that, the recycling program reminders, you know, that's that's the idea of it. If, uh, if people have ideas around it, feel free to, you know, submit them. <clears throat> Okay, well, why don't we take a break? Um, there was an item on here on assessments, but we're, we really aren't prepared to address it. That was part of the DCCR. So um, why don't we take a break and then we'll come back and do the property report. What time? 15 minutes? Yeah, 1130, does that work? Or, no, I'm sorry, 1030? 1030. Ah, my laptop. Your time. <laughs> we go one more round. You need a, you right. need a, you need a Thank glass you. and a spoon. If you guys haven't figured it out, I'm all about making these beatings move. So I just everybody sit down. I work for a big company and I sit in a lot of damn meetings. So, um, okay. Uh, quickly, I, a couple of things I want to address, and I, I, I'm going to take a moment to go off uh, go off script here because I want Dave to do his report, but then he has other things he needs to do. First of all, um, uh, Ron, to answer your question, you want to pop that up there? Yeah. On the website, HOA or TamaronHOA.com. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Check your <laughs> <laughs> you piss off. That's <laughs> century. Like they want to hook up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Under telecom info, there is a uh, information here about who you contact uh, if your TV isn't working. If, if anybody that has never had Direct TV, that signal. Uh, or that, that dish in that box looks for a signal on a constant basis. If it, if it is not communicated with on a regular basis, it will shut off. And you will get a 772 or a 771 error or something like that. What's a 772? Which yeah. I'm guessing is what's on. This, is, this is in the FAQs, right? Yeah, this, this is, is in the, the FAQs. FAQs. And what it says here is maintenance will support you during normal business hours and help you out. Off hours, you need to call... Uh, group entertainment support desk and the numbers there okay um, so that information is there I don't know Ron if you looked at it or not last night but you you were asking if we have that information and it's out there what I looked at was the message on the screen which said 772 call the front desk which is what I did well here's well, the rest of the answer that's the rest of the answer 772 or 722 722 well, yeah whatever this yeah. is on the website and and just so everybody knows what we try to do is get uh, DirecTV to ping all of the uh, all the units once a month. That way, you don't have to go through the reactivation process. However, that doesn't work on the DVRs. I just found that out. It doesn't work on the DVRs. So, <laughs> to get a DVR and you haven't been here for I think it's 60 days, it probably has to be reactivated. Yeah, and just for everyone's benefit, remember, and I'm a as I said, I wanted to go off script here. I, I, we recognized Julie earlier for helping us out with 
uh, the disposition of 110. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. I briefly mentioned the staff. I will tell you, our staff puts up a lot of crap, okay? Um, 110 was the extreme amount of that. But Gary and Dave deserve a heck of a lot of recognition, as does Heather and the front desk, because, I mean, these are the bad cops, first of all. They had to play bad cop. Julie was playing good cop. Taryn was awesome with 110 and building that relationship to keep the lines of communication open uh, with her. But keep in mind, those people at the front desk are employees. They're also our neighbors. They're also our friends. We shouldn't be ripping into them. And we've had many an instance where they're getting screamed at because maintenance can't do something or maintenance isn't available. We had an issue last night where an owner ripped into the front desk staff. That's just unfair to them. There's only so much they can do. Keep in mind, if you're if you're gone for 60 or 90 or 120 days, nobody's going into your unit and turning stuff on and off and making sure it works. If it doesn't work, give us time, report it, we'll do what we can. But just remember that these front desk staff uh, really do have to uh, put up with a lot of attitude and a lot of people frustrated. They put up with renters that come in and things don't work. So just keep that in mind. Treat them with respect. I'm going to turn it over to you. Want to do the property report? Sure. Um. Obviously, since the last meeting, uh, big ticket item was snow removal. It was a heavy year. Uh, we did get it all done with the contractors that we've had for multiple years. Uh, we thought we'd have to bring in extra help, but they kept up. Uh, we worked with them, mostly the ground staff, but everybody jumped in at different times. Uh, north elevator, we shut that down uh, about two months ago. Uh, we took an estimate from the elevator company. They hit it really right on the day when we opened it. Uh, it isn't 100% complete. We are going to look at redoing the interior of the, of the cab. Uh, there are also some, some cosmetic things we have to do uh, in the cab and in the, uh, in the lobby areas. So I don't, there might be some minor shutdowns. There definitely will when we do the interior. That'll probably wait until fall. And I think that's only going to be a day or two shutdown. Uh, the grounds. Um, one thing about a heavy winter is the grounds take a beating also. Uh, they've been working all spring, cleaning up a lot of limbs down, a lot of damage to uh, sprinkler heads and grass. Uh, they've been fighting the weather. It's been a real wet spring. So uh, I think they're doing a good job, but they are they got a lot ahead of them. Uh, concrete ceiling. We did do uh, some colored concrete at our entries. Uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we'll, the contractor that did it will be coming back, cleaning that, resealing it to extend the life of it. When that happens, we'll have to close down entries. Uh, so we'll give notices to the lodge when that's going to happen and uh, what doors will be available and what doors won't. Uh, those will be just one day at a time closures. Uh, window washing will be starting here in the next week or two. Uh, that will go on for probably the outlines go fairly quickly. The lives takes probably a couple months by the time it's completely done. Uh, furnace PMs, we've completed all the larger furnaces and the outlines. We've started on the PTAC units. Um, we, we've held off because we changed the PTAC units to uh, continuous operation, which people don't like when they're using this heat. As you can tell, uh, we're still heating. Uh, usually we're done this time of year. So uh, they're doing empty units right now, and they'll be contacting owners. Uh, in the outlines, the upstairs have the, the PTAC units, and all the lodge units are PTACs. Uh, the hallway cleans, we just had a Heather lined up a, a clean company. They just came through, and it was last week or the week before. They power wash or cleaned all the hallways and common areas in the lodge. Uh, it's a little bit later than we usually do it, but we wanted to wait with the cutting the holes uh, in the ceilings to allow the drywall was cut <clears throat> and patched. So uh, that was completed, so we, we had the cleaners come in behind them. Um, pipe repairs, uh, Joe touched on that in his. We've had quite a few breaks. Um, it's more than usual, not significantly. Part of it's also with the number of remodels. When we start opening up walls for remodels, when contractors do, they find pipes that we might not know about haven't caused problems, but there is a crack in them. So obviously we take that opportunity to repair them. Uh, we even on occasion will repair pipes that, that look suspect but aren't broken, but since the drywall is off and we get to them easily, we, 
we try and get those when we can. And that's pretty much everything. Okay. I'm sorry, Any uh, any questions from anyone? Yes, Chris. Uh, Christopher Smith, 501, 329, and um, 837. I know um, we've only gone through April, but we have the fat medication uh, budgeted for. Just wanted to know when that will start this year. Um, I spoke with Russell last week, and uh, there isn't a scheduled start date. I, uh, basically, we're just talking about when he's going to be in town so we can meet and come up with a game plan. So we made contact, but, but there's nothing scheduled now. So we're using the same vendor? Russell? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? For Dave, so he can go do his day job. I just want to tell Dave thank you for I already shoveled off the roof when our unit was leaking, and I didn't know that, so I just wanted to shout out to you and say thank you. I didn't personally do it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I made the call to get the guys a thank you. Yeah, we're there. They got all the gear, all the tie outs, all that. Yeah. And actually, our work comp. Unless it's an extreme emergency, we we can't just go on the road. Well, and kudos to you guys. I mean, this has been a nutty snow year, and I I get the emails of people saying I need everything done. So, good job. Well, maintenance department, everybody stepped up. Yeah. I mean, Karen and Mike, and across the board, it was. Um, there was a lot of shoveling this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah, Diane. I just want to say how thankful I am for the new central elevator. It's wonderful. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's that was a problem when it was breaking down a lot, and hopefully that's the so major. Smooth. It's really nice. If you haven't ridden it, go for it. <laughs> 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 All right, before you go, Dave, one thing, I'm going to move on to old business, and I'm just going to address one thing really quick. Um, uh, last year, and Joe, you may need to help me with the numbers, or Eric, I think you probably remember, we met with uh, Jim Finnegan uh, towards the, um, uh, the, the the fall to talk about the landscaping and things like that that we needed to do this year. We still have like 100 grand or something like that this for, the, for the landscaping for everything that was left over from the lodge remodel. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 50000 50, that's actually something we need to address with, with Glacier because right. there was supposed to be a, a combined effort to come up with a plan for the landscaping that is on the border areas between our property and their property to kind of enhance the whole entry experience. And, uh, you know, that's been two years now that we've, it, it hasn't happened. Right. And so that's something we need to talk to. Have you had any discussions, Dave, with, with anybody at Glacier? I mean, I, I know we're going to deal with snow. We haven't really had any time to be plant plant. Jim, but Jim Goodman's yeah. here. It would have been dead if we did. So. Jim Goodman's here, and he's going like this. Yeah, <laughs> Jim's like, I'm the new guy. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the guy. issue on cursory level, and so I, I just will get into it and report back to the board. Okay. But I do understand there's a there's a uh, maybe a responsibility on, on both of our sides to get together, plan it, and then, and then put it in place. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that, you know, just we know we have signage that we need to deal with. We know we have landscaping we need to deal with. Just know that it's not fallen off the radar by any stretch of the imagination. So anything else we let Dave go or yes, sir. Do we know when they're going to get the road fixed out there? Yeah, what happened in the road, by the way? So you I, know, I, again, I know a little bit about this. I think that was a break and a patch. And as you, many of you might know, asphalt plants are dictated by temperature. Yeah. You can't get any asphalt yet until the temperatures <laughs> come up. Yeah. Um, so I, I did ask uh, Bill Greco and the team to throw some more gravel down and try to smooth those potholes over. And I assure you, as soon as we can get the asphalt plant open, we're going to get that patch, as well as there's a few other areas I've noticed driving around them. Some potholes and some other things that need some attention. In God's name. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. I'll stick around until everyone starts. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, we got to do ARC. I'm sorry. My bad. You ready to move on? Go ahead. Let's okay. do ARC. All right. Um, acting um, for for Rick, who started this process and, as we know, is now off being a grandfather. Um, we have one architectural review uh, application for this meeting. It's Unit 791. Um, this application actually involves two separate questions. Uh, one, however, is pretty routine, um, one we 
we've done a similar install several times, so I'm, I'm going to hold off on that one for just a minute. Um, the other one is a new um, situation, and I, in that sense, sets a precedent. We've never been faced with this question before, and, and let me further explain that. Um, when this application came through to Dave uh, here fairly recently, uh, came with a with an architectural drawing, and it mentioned that the state, I'm sorry, the county had changed the county building department. I'm going to say, Dave, I may not have the name quite right, but they have changed their zoning, their requirements to um, uh, something that's been done quite frequently here at, at Tamron. As many of you know, we used to have a lot of Murphy beds here, and those Murphy beds were surrounded by curtains. Well, many of us have taken those curtains down, and we have put walls up. Uh, under our understanding of the new county regulations, anybody who now puts up those interior walls has to have a window egress from that bedroom to get code. <coughs> so we're. And, and I'll mention one thing: the architect's actually in here. Okay. Keegan. So if there is a question on the code, he he can address that. Okay. So I mean, so this is this is a county regulation that applies to any new construction, not to existing. Correct. It's, supposedly it's, grandfathered. So it, yeah, stuff is grandfathered in if it was done before this. But when I turned in to get a building permit, um, the county has adopted the 2012 International Building Code. Yeah. And so the difference from the older code to that one is. The newer code requires, uh, you know, buildings a bit like this, condos, to be sprinklered, sprinkled. Mm -hmm. And before, they didn't have to be sprinkled, but if they were sprinkled, you could do a windowless bedroom. But now, every R2 building is required to be sprinkled, so now you have to have the egress window. So they, mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, so they have to egress directly to the outside. You can't egress through an intermediate yeah. space. Right. And just for those who aren't keeping up with egress, that means you need to get outside, yeah. which means it has to be an openable window. <laughs> uh, not just glass, but an openable window. So um, this happens to be an A unit uh, on the end of um, a building down in, in uh, Gamble. Um, the drawing is uh, is slightly incorrect in terms of where the window is placed, and I've drawn an arrow to, to where I, I believe the window is now intended to go, at least consistent with the picture that I have. Um, and I'll, I'll just mention as I pass these around, the proposed window egress out of the out of the proposed bedroom. And I'll show you a floor plan in just a minute. Is actually underneath the deck of a studio unit, so it's not something architecturally you would do because you're not going to get a huge amount of light, uh, but code is now requiring it. So that's the the proposed window, and then I'll, I'll do, this is the floor plan, this is the this is the deck, and this is where the window is going to go. So likewise, this is uh, this is the the deck here. And they're proposing to put the window right there, so you can that's so you can see that's the. I mean, so this is something that we will have to be on the lookout as an association if we do approve any interior remodels, which have normally not even mm -hmm. affected this group mm -hmm. because it didn't affect the exterior of the of the unit. Um, those will now require an exit window. Um, and so those of I'm you who trouble connecting to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> boy, boy, <laughs> silence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, so I guess as an aside, for those of you who have put in bedroom walls without a, 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 hmm. a, a an exit window, uh, you've now got something that will henceforth be unique. Um, I don't know whether that will enhance your value or not, but uh, I mean, there are some cases where bedrooms, you know, there simply isn't any way to put in a window, which would have meant that those folks are not able to to do the remodel that they had in mind. And I suspect this design might have come out differently. They may have to go back to the drawing boards and re redesign this space if 
um, if the board does not approve the window because, well, either that or they just they can't have it. They can't have the interior walls. So, um, are there any questions? Everybody understand the the dilemma and what the proposed solution is. Okay. <coughs> Dave, anything further you wish to add? I covered all the important facts I truthfully. Like to say that you know that back in the corner where that window's going, you know, there's it's just solid walls. So I think it would actually help help the elevation, you know, and make it look a little bit nicer. Honestly, than just my opinion. Okay. So this is kind of underneath the spiral stairs, behind yes, the spiral stairs. Yeah, going up to the yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just didn't see the stairs in the picture, yeah. but yeah. Oh, okay. but yeah, there's the there's the support beam. Um, so I'm not going to ask for a separate vote on that. The the other windows being proposed are on the exterior end of the building, which we have done in many cases. This faces the next set of uh, next building, the next set of condos to the south. Um, and they're proposing two windows here, again, casement windows that would open. The only thing I would mention is that it is fairly high up. It actually does uh, cause us to, to remove a little bit of what is the, the decorative board on the side of the building. Do we know why That's, that is? Did anybody, Dave, do you know why it's up so high? Is it just a function of the elevation in the room? <clears throat> yeah, we're just trying to get it up. That's, I think that's about eight feet, eight foot <coughs> From the inside, so um, that's that's why the placement is there. We're we're open to moving it around a little bit. We just want to get some light. Yeah, uh, Dave is. Yeah, I just mentioned it because I think it's a little bit different. But Dave assures me that that contractually, construction wise, it doesn't create a problem for for us or for the owner. Uh, so I have no no objection to that as proposed. And just so everybody knows, I don't think you mentioned the, the unit number, but it's, it's an end cap of uh, one of the buildings in um, in uh, Gamble Oaks. So this is the same build, same same unit. Right? Same unit, yeah. Same two unit. two requests. The first one is a precedent. The second one is pretty much what we've done in other cases. Is there an adjacent building yes. to the south with yes. windows that we've uh, Davis contacted? Uh, that made efforts to contact. One had no problem. Then neither one of our, our direct line. One is off to the left and one is up above. One owner responded without an issue. The other owner didn't bother to respond. Okay. Fair enough. Fair. Say that right? Okay. Yeah. So um, I propose that we accept the. Is uh, one other part of that was the pants? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, on, on the outside wall, where the windows, there's a, a, also a small kitchen vent that is being proposed. Again, very. Just a tiny little bit there. Again, oh, the it's rest. very, okay. very okay. similar to what we've we've done in the past. It's on the outside wall. Um, so those those are the three yeah. modifications that are being proposed. Thank you, Dave. Um, so I, I'll make a motion uh, <clears throat> that we accept the uh, application as submitted. I'll second. Any other questions? All the usual things are in place. The owner yeah. has owns it, owns all the problems forevermore, all those kinds of things. So this is no this isn't a taco window, this is an owner's window. Windows. Right. So all right. move for a vote. Um, all in favor of uh, approving the motion to allow uh, this to proceed. Aye. Aye. Rick, you still out there? Is Rick still online? Yes, I am. I'm here. <laughs> Since you're supposed to be giving this report, can I assume you approve or do you need to speak up and say so? No, I approve. As long as everybody else approves, I'm good. <laughs> you woke him up. You shouldn't have done that. Right. He's preoccupied. All right. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Okay. Now, Gary, I guess you can uh, you can go book and you do your thing. Or not Gary. Today. <laughs> Can I go with <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to make you stick around. Yeah. All right. Um, other old business. Um, I already talked about the signage and landscaping. We do know we need to get that done. Joe talked about the land swap. That did get completed. We signed all the plats and deeds and everything we Signs needed to sign a couple delivered. of months ago. Um, so that is all taken care of. 
Um, we did also execute, uh, I think if you all recall, we have um, in our agreement with Glacier as it related to the, um, uh, the amenities, uh, for whatever reason, they agreed not to sell alcohol in the agreement and didn't catch it. And uh, they subsequently asked us if they could sell beer since they were doing it anyway, and we needed to revise the agreement to allow them to do that. <laughs> so um, that, that was completed as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, that's the extent of the old business, unless anybody else has something they want to add. Anything? Anybody in the audience? Just some housekeeping things. Now that the land swap is done, we have procured equipment to do a poop station. Uh, I understand that you can hardly see the ground. <laughs> that's, a, we that's, a, to get that's a pet poop station. Pets to say, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, Joe, for that clarification. We're not, not going to put a porta potty out there. Yeah. <laughs> but the record show that was Joe Carey. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guess on that, we really haven't made any plans on what we're going to do with that north six, lot yet. <laughs> well, but, but please, those, as I understand it, it looks terrible up there. People are using it for pet patrol and uh, no. so now we will have a station. Please okay. use it. Kind of like cigarette butts, you know. Responsible pooping. Responsible <laughs> pet ownership. <laughs> Responsible pet ownership. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, new business. Uh, I wanted to just remind everyone that um, oh, hi, no, we talked about that. We'll make sure that happens. Yeah. We talked about the, the DCCRs, obviously, um, uh, being tied to the elections. September uh, is uh, rapidly approaching. So um, did our uh, expert just leave? What's, <laughs> yeah, John just ran out of here. I forget the timing on when we get ballots out and whatnot, but we will be sending out uh, notifications of uh, um, need to fill, uh, is it July? July. Okay. Uh, we'll need to fill, uh, I think two board seats or just two, two seats are up for election, I should say, uh, or up for re-election. So we'll get notification on that out uh, in July. So that is forthcoming. Um, we did have uh, some owners uh, or an owner asking about new business uh, speed limit signs. Is Jim still here? So um, we had an owner that expressed some concern about uh, the uh, the inner roads and, and putting speed limit signs up there. Uh, you know, obviously coming down the hill from Gamble, I think we've got people who are exceedingly some, fast coming down that hill. I had somebody in a Porsche yesterday blow by me right past the uh, the comfort station between Pinecone and Gamble Oak. I mean, he was doing 40 at least, and he was in a Porsche, and he turned into Cliff's Edge. Cliff's Edge. Yep. So I don't know who it is, but... If I had, if I could have moved quick enough and got the license number, I would have. Would have yeah. So the question really was, uh, they asked us if we could put speed limit signs up, and our comment was, it's not really our responsibility or our land to do so. Um, have you guys had any discussions about that, you know, or has that come up at all? First, my memory, I thought there was a speed limit. Well, there, there's speed limit signs out there. We're so just talking about what putting more up. Well, is that yeah, I was. It, I think it was Kimberly McKnight that brought it up. Is she yeah. here? Yeah, she's not here. Okay. Well. I, I, you know, honestly, I haven't paid enough attention to even know where the speed limit signs yeah, are. So. I thought I recalled at least seeing one speed limit sign on the property, but I'll go out and drive around and figure out where they're at. And I'll, again, I'll come back to the board. I think I think it would be there. good if both organizations and for you know communicate that, hey, the on-property speed limit is 15 miles an hour. Yeah, I was going to say the other part we do, as you remember, Joe, is we frequently each spring communicate in our newsletters to refresh them about yeah. wildlife and speeding and smoking and, and you know, yeah. all, of these other all that good stuff. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that communication's coming out imminently. Okay. So we'll continue to work with the membership yeah. on that. Okay. Um, any other, uh, well, I want to address 110. Let's, let's go ahead and get that done and then we'll go on to other, other new business. You have something else? I had something that came up when I went to break. Um, wondering if Gary, technically, it's possible to take the discussion on smoking, the third here, and put it just that segment on the internet or on our website, so that anybody who's wants to kind of catch up on what took place here today can go access that and listen to just that ten-minute segment. Should be able to. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Can we do that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, we that's we're putting it out there for comment for a reason. So whatever yeah. makes it easier. Sometimes. You're talking about the audio. The audio. Just the audio. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, as I mentioned early on, um, we acquired Unit 110 yesterday at approximately 12.32.
We're now proud <laughs> owner of Unit One Chess. <laughs> and trust me, we were all monitoring that signature very closely. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously, the association now owns um, a unit that's unusually situated in the middle of a floor that um, you know we have to make a determination as to what we're going to do with it. Um, when we looked at acquiring uh, the unit, um, uh, Julie was able to get into the unit several times. Uh, Ashley Arsenault, who was the owner, uh, did do a significant amount of remodeling to it already. Um, she basically remodeled the whole thing because her intent was to sell the property. Um, uh, at this stage, we really haven't made it, had any discussions whatsoever as to what we were planning to do with it other than um, having a discussion if we could acquire it. Um, as I mentioned, this all came into place uh, starting at probably 5.30 uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, the offer uh, was accepted and we, I think, threw it out there probably five or six times starting six, eight weeks ago. Um, so we really haven't had, had, had zero discussion about what we want to do with it. We have several options. Um, I mentioned the fact that our rental uh, units uh, inventory is down. Uh, we could certainly look at it being a short-term rental. We could look at it being a long-term rental. Uh, we could turn around and just resell it right away. Uh, none of that has been determined. So our thought was um, to uh, basically have a, a committee of the board sit down and start uh, analyzing what, what the best options are. Uh, certainly, we're entering... Uh, the busiest part of the year uh, from a rental perspective or a, a, one of the busier parts of the year. Um, I will tell you there is nothing other than a dresser. I think she even got rid of the TV, if I understand correctly. Is that? She did. There's she a did. microwave in there. There's right? a microwave and a dresser, so we obviously have to. The TV's gone. <laughs> the TV's gone. There's no plates, no forks, no and I, and no my, my understanding was there was going to be somebody. How did she eat? <laughs> my, my understanding was there's somebody going to be coming to pick up the mattress that was on the That's floor. already gone. Yeah, That's that, gone? That, that was gone yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, there's a dresser and a microwave. And that's okay. It. So yeah, personally, I think we need to create a committee to do that. And um, I, Ron, you want to make a motion? On I that? have a motion. <laughs> I make a motion that the president of the board be given the discretion to form a committee relative to the management or disposition of Unit 110 recently acquired by the association. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Do we have discussion? So that's the only thing I would. I, I, at this point, it's a common element. Yep. It's under the board's authority. Um, I think you know the, the only thing that I would might add to that motion would be some kind of fiscal a power. I mean, I assume you're going to buy a bed. You're going to buy. You know, we're going to have to spend some money. And I if we rent it, we I'm but... agonizing here because I would like to offer something that needs to be considered. Okay. Well, in our declarations, the disposition of a common element requires a vote of the owners. Oh, totally does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we need to consider that if we're talking about that's reselling. Why it. I want to have a committee yeah. Yeah. start looking at that. It might make sense to rent it until such time that we yeah. have the vote. We might just want to hold on to hold on to it for a while and. You know, that's correct and let it maybe let it appreciate a little more now that we have that now that we have that cancer out of here you know maybe the lodge values will start to climb a little Let's better money at a cd <laughs> <laughs> i can guarantee you that um all right any other comments from the board so i guess my own again just to finish that thought um yeah we do have some un uh, designated capital funds in our 2019 budget. We do. I would suggest that, you know, we authorize the committee with the approval of the president to spend, you know, up to probably 4,000 bucks to get this thing fully operational. We, we also have reserves and moving asset, moving cash assets to a hard asset is a, we're not, you know, well, it's, it's a wash to the balance. It's a wash right. to the balance sheet. So, you know, and then when we sell it, it goes back to cash. So we also could use some of our reserves. Yeah. And Julie does believe we do have some decent furniture floating around here somewhere. That no, we can look at that too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's mostly in the cages underneath the building. Yeah. I got some down there myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll donate. <laughs> and there's some stuff in the way up here in the back end of the second floor. There's, yeah. there's some. Uh, but you're going to have to buy a good mattress. You're going to have to spend some oh, yeah, money. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. going to be free. If so, we're going to if we're going to rent it, we're going to have to do. Yeah. We're going to have to furnish it yeah. without a doubt. Um, but that's why the committee we need to have the committee address it. Yeah. We also need to do things like call the city or call 
help uh, help apply to electric and get the utilities changed over and those kind of things as well. Yeah. Okay. Any more comment from the board before I go to ownership? Okay. Ron. I'm in 504-505. A couple of comments and one question, please. Uh, question number one, um, well, comment number one, thank the board for solving the problem. Um, we have been away and weren't totally familiar with what was going on, but um, I'm certain that we will not get the details, and nor do we need them. Secondly, just I'm sure there's plenty of people that will share. Uh, I, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, as a member of TACO now for several years and an owner involved in rentals, there are a hundred of us that would be competing with TACO in a rental program. So my thought or suggestion would be, please don't compete with me. Okay. Um, secondly, what have we learned out of this situation that would help us avoid it happening again? <clears throat> Not to allow dope smoking on the first floor. <laughs> the um, uh, I tell you, we we thought long and hard to address the question on what have we learned. Um, this particular owner bought the property sight unseen, paid cash, uh, made an offer, um, uh, you know, directly uh, to Julie. Uh, showed up on a bus, if I remember correctly. Is that what oh, she came flew from. She Did flew she fly? from. She flew from New Orleans to Albuquerque, and she flew. Okay. Yeah. And, and then and then got a ride as far That's as the right. as the as, as the Uber driver would take her, which was Bloomfield. Yes. At which that. time she called Julie and said, "Miss Julie, can you come and get me?" Yeah. She told me. I had to <laughs> so, um, you know, certainly, and I can assure you, and I wish Julie were here, but I'm kind of glad she didn't because she'd probably break down trying to explain it. Um, Julie felt horrible about how this thing played out. Um, I can assure you that Julie is going to think twice the next time a cash offer comes in for somebody that's, that has never seen the property. That being said, there's not a whole lot we can do when a seller accepts an offer and it's a cash offer. Um, we can't, uh, we talk about doing background checks, okay? We could do a background check. What does a background check do for us though? It tells it. It tells. Can we preclude them? I mean, can we say they can't live here? If we do, are we? You know, could we be challenged with that? Didn't Taco have to approve every owner in here? Nope. No. Yes. no. Owners? No. no. We sign off. We, they, sign, we off. sign off. You do, you do sign off. Each right. each owner each new owner has to fill out certain documents, acknowledge rules and regulations and such. But we don't have a we don't have approval authority over a sale. As long as the paperwork is submitted properly, the sale goes through. And what's our exposure if we do? What if we start doing background checks tomorrow, but we don't do background checks of any of you guys in the room? And something turns up that we didn't know about, and somebody challenges the fact that we didn't do background checks. It's a slippery legal slope to start doing background we've, checks. We've discussed it with legal counsel. But, but we require background checks on all of our long-term tenants. On our renters. That's on different. Our renters, we do. That's different. No, well, yeah, because we, don't, we pick on just long-term tenants at right. this point. Well, you can't. Think <laughs> about, you can't do it. Sure. Think about the logistics I mean, of doing that on a short-term renter. Well, we're just already on that slippery rent, slope is my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. The slippery slope is already, we're already on the slope. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a different, I think it's a different slope entirely. And, and trust me, yeah. Christina very well adamantly thinks it's a different slope. There's, there's. I'll speak Boyd in my Texas. Board, I'm my in board Florida. in Texas. I'm on HOA board. We do. Oh, you got Texas and Florida. Come on. It's throw a throw those yeah. uh, <laughs> They do a soft pull on the credit. They do three references. Uh, you know. Uh, trust me. We, I, Julie, we, Ju I mean, Christina would like to understand how that works a little better. She was. She does not feel in Colorado. I'm not saying it's safe. right. Yeah. But I'm just saying that's what we do. I'm saying it's legal. <laughs> we talked about it. Believe yeah. me. We, we, we wish we would have been able to do something different. But the reality is we, we didn't and we couldn't do anything after the fact. Um, I'm sorry. Diane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a way that the owner could request a potential buyer to sign off on something that then gives you legal rights? To do what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like. <laughs> 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 you can't do a background. You can't do a background. We can, but then what action do we take and what exposure do we uh, accept by doing so? That's the question. And how far back do you go? And how far, yeah, how far back do we go? The only what, if so, what, if, what if somebody got a, 
What if somebody did something when they were 18 and they're 52 now and we get called on it, right? I mean, how, how do we how do we interpret that? How do we how do we pass judgment on somebody's background? It's just a, you know, a, I'm not opposed to it, but Christina doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah, the Supreme Court nominee, Kavanaugh. There were warrants for arrest in. Well, he's a justice now. Yes, he is. Don't they put a date on these things? Do you not know the date of? If you do a background check and a formal background check, yes, you would get you would get dates of of that kind of activity. Not legal. It's almost like saying we're not going to have any black. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's also we're a fair housing issue. Hispanic. Right? No, you 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 nailed it. I mean, we have th this we have a fair housing issue that we have to deal with. We can't discriminate discriminate against, against anybody. In this particular case, we had somebody that was mentally ill. Yeah. I mean, I don't think she'd admit it. <laughs> I think yeah, we all know yeah. she was. But okay, back when. I did contracts and was bidding job production company. In our industry, there was like a key phrase when someone would call up and say, would you, you work with this director, what did you think? And rather than crashing and possibly getting in trouble, my key word was interesting. And then that producer would know, don't hire that production. Company. But we can't stop them from buying there, a unit. There are ways, I think, to, with potential buyers, if you know enough, you know, like if we go, if we go non-smoking, or we, you can, the realtor can say they are really strict on their smoking restrictions. No. Again, Diane, under advice of counsel, we've been told that we should not go down that path. For Glacier, for Glacier, for example, we're a private club. We do do background checks, and we can't exclude you based on the content of your private club. Checks. If there's felonies, drug offenses, violent offenses, we typically will will refuse for that. But we're a private organization. That's correct. You're talking about public <coughs> housing, and you cannot discriminate on that basis. No. Simply can't do it. Sorry to. Put my no, no, no. I'm thanks for thank you for filling it in. That's what I was referencing when I talked about fair housing. I mean, we just can't do it. I'm saying I know, but it seems to me yes. that a realtor has some control, not a lot, but you lose your license. Diane, unfortunately, they they don't. They have fiduciary responsibility to to that to to their. Uh, to the person they represent. Yeah. So, Terry. Okay. Uh, and, Terry, my friends should keep remembering that number. <laughs> uh, you were talking about uh, redoing the apartment or furnishing it and so on, when there was a comment about uh, competing with the, the rental market. I wonder if it might be a, an idea to make it very handicapped accessible with to encourage uh, uh, handicapped people to be on the first floor and uh, that it might uh, help with the, the rental market to have a handicap that's uh, certainly a consideration I mean that's again that's why we want the committee to, to, to address and see what makes the most sense um, you know I'm in the rental market too I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the rental pool too um, do I consider a competition not really. I mean, any any person that buys a property can convert theirs to a rental, and I've got another competitor, right? Inventory is dropping. Not, In, and inventory is half of what it was. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not as as worried about that. B. Um, I'd like to add to what Diane said. I couldn't hear everything because she's way back there. I think a non-smoking building would eliminate a certain type of. Client. So do we. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I got to know this woman a little bit because I saw her every day. And I know the one thing she wanted was to be near a pot shop <laughs> okay? and, and a pool. But, uh, and, and so people are coming to Colorado. For are, are you suggesting we do that with the restaurant space? 
<laughs> no, point taken. I mean, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, her her, her biggest uh, prerequisite of being here, and honestly, what she uh, when she made phone calls to Vermont was where's the wheat store. So that's why she flew to Burlington. Yeah, and what what we do have to understand though, and going back to what you said, Diane, the the realtors do give them the rules and regs, and they're required to sign the rule. A buyer is required to sign the rules and regs. Rules and regs meant nothing to this person. This person could come here. This could be a non-smoking building. It wouldn't have mattered a whit to her. And you know that. You saw her. No, it, it, no. It, on it, her Vermont thing, she wanted to make sure. It would not have meant. For somebody to go and sit in the common areas, sit in the common areas and smoke both marijuana and cigarettes, she didn't give a damn about <laughs> the rules of yeah. Yeah, I, I can tell you, you could have bought a car with the fines we assessed to her. Yeah. And, 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 and but you know, again, she did not care about any of it. Um, you know, our uh, uh, in in our opinion, our fiduciary responsibility as it related to, to to dealing with this was to do everything we could to get her out. Yeah. So and and we did. But we're talking about is there any way? To prevent. I think we've already addressed that. Not legal. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, we, we, there are federal restrictions that prohibit discrimination on housing. So it means we, so have we are to work at the federal or state level. Unless we'll you have at it. Those were written in the 60s. People, <laughs> unless suddenly have no rights against all these groups. That, what we have is we have rules and regs to try to to try to manage. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. We beat that to death. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second. We need a vote uh, to form a committee as it relates to the disposition and or uh, uh, management of 110. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Greg? Aye. Bingo? Aye. Aye. All right. Any other new business? Set a land speed record here. We'll be done before 11:30. <laughs> anybody, anybody have any business? Uh, new business? Okay. Well, um, we're going to have an executive committee meeting, so we can't officially. You can't adjourn until. I was just going to say yeah. we can't adjourn until after executive committee. Uh, we will regroup here, uh, probably by. 12.45 or so would be my guess, 1 o'clock. That's optimistic. Huh? That's optimistic. Hey, you challenged me on how long this was going to be, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> I don't think lunch is here yet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, buddy, coming. Thank you all. For your hard work. Well, no, no. They have to get uh, we'll be so we're done lunch. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah.